pause. Press play. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Don't pause. Press play. 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 Hello, everybody! Hey! hey, hey. Uh, we, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 26th Slips Rocket League Tournament, Weekly Tournament. 
this is exciting, so exciting that I'm trying my best to speak, but I'm having a hard time doing it. I am GJ, the shell pasta lover, the emperor, whoever you want to call me. And with me is the host of the pre-show, and the bagel queen herself, Shay. Let's see if I got this right here. Yep, yep, right here, right here. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome oh. back. <laughs> we've got a look, we've got a fun itinerary planned out for you. Firstly, we got something that's very unique, particularly to Shay. Would you mind telling us what it is? Hmm? Okay, so today in front of me, I've got a nice setup and I'm going to teach everyone how to tie dye. And today Ooh. I'll be tie dye. Yes. I'll be tie dyeing a nice white long sleeve t shirt from. The little boy section at Walmart. Aww. Thank you. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let me make sure you guys know what's coming besides the awesomeness that is tie dye. We also have an interview featuring It's Fire Phantom and Moon Man. And just so that we're clear, for folks watching at home who may not know where they come from, we got It's Fire Phantom from N7 Phantoms and Moon Man from XB Official. Two of our more memorable teams, so we got that to look forward to. And of course, of course, we got the main tourney coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern. So, let's get to the first bit of action. The good old tie-dye. Now, I do believe you have your tie-dye equipment all set up and ready to go. Ready to go. I know of tie-dye. I've seen tie-dye shirts. I know of the 70s, but I have never seen how tie-dye shirts or tie-dye anything has been made before. That's new to me. Okay, and now I will teach you. I have lots of experience with tie-dyeing. <laughs> yes, enlighten me. <laughs> okay, so first, let's see the setup. I've got pink, yellow, and blue. I'm going to put on these gloves so that I don't dye my hands horribly. Probably will still get dye on them. They gave me an extra pair, apparently. Now you all notice, ladies and gentlemen, that Shay is not wearing her official slips uniform. This is for a good reason. She does not want to stain it with dye. Okay, and then down here, I have this, the shirt. I wet it already, because it's supposed to be wet. Mm -hmm. I may or may not have gotten a little bit of dye on it somewhere already, but here's the shirt. Anyway. Um, chat, help me decide how I should dye it. I know two patterns. I know how to do... Here's this. I know how to do the spiral, and I can also do patterns of lines. I also had the idea of doing a spiral, like, in the center of the shirt, and then the arms would be lines. What do you think? What do you think, DJ? <laughs> Usually tie-dye looks colorful and amazing no matter what pattern you pick <laughs> so oh hang on we got hussein aka slip league championship saying spiral plus lines well we got the mandate from the boss <laughs> of course <Okay. laughs> all jokes aside you wonderful folks at home can tell us what kind of patterns you want us to uh well you want shay here to make that depends on what she can actually make of course <laughs> I don't know what you can actually make. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, there's some lint on it. Okay. Oh, so no, basically, no, 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 no <laughs> how you do the spiral is you have to lay it flat, and then you take the center or wherever you want it to spiral out, spiral out from, mm -hmm. and then you just twist it. And hopefully I can get this nice and good. Yeah, like this. And then I'll just leave the arms out of it so that I can do those with lines. Here's one arm, here's the other one. And then I will take my I will take my rubber bands, put it through, and tie it down like so. Just holding it down, and then I'll keep doing that so that I have multiple rubber bands going around, holding in place. As I learned during the uh, preparation for the pre-show, rubber bands are apparently very important to the tie-dyeing process. Of all things, <laughs> rubber bands. 
Yes, gotta keep it in place, because otherwise it'll get all ugly all over the place. <laughs> yeah, you can't just throw tie-dye on the shirt and call it an A. It's gonna be a mess. You want it to yeah. be a beautiful artsy mess. Yeah, targeted colors. <laughs> I'm considering maybe blue and purple to honor slips. <laughs> I'm not, let's see. Uh, am I a little too loud? A little too low? A little too high? How about now? I don't want to be too loud. I don't want to overpower the host here. Um. Okay, this looks a little maybe uneven, but I think we can work with it. <laughs> hey, unit. It doesn't need to be perfect, you know. Just is. Alright, how about how about this? Because I gotta make You're sure very that tiny. I gotta let's see. <laughs> I'm very tiny. Very tiny. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I got the mic directly so... <laughs> in front of my face. Like I have the mic got set it. up so that it's not oh louder, he says. All right, all right, 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 right. Let's see. Is this set? It's better be set to the right mic. And yeah, it is. All right, let's see. Uh, check, 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 check. Oh, okay. Maybe if I. Hmm. There, this, this is good. Okay, good, good, good. As long as I'm talking directly to the mic, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, I have it. St I, there's multiple settings on this blue yeti here. One of the settings makes it so it only picks up audio that's like on one end or the other end of the mic and not on the sides. That decreases background noise, but I gotta make sure that my I'm right in front of that darn thing. I keep forgetting that. And how's the dating going? The search continues. <laughs> Have you been on Tinder since yeah, you left? I've been on Tinder every now and then, looking for uh, potential, looking for uh, potential people to uh, virtually date. It, like it's gotta be virtual <laughs> for obvious reasons, because pandemic. <laughs> and, You're in pandemic, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. How well, how's your life been outside of dating? Outside, outside of dating, uh, my life's been uh, pretty good. So I did have. I really hate to be a bit of a uh, sad panda here, but my doggy passed away in her sleep last night. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, found out earlier this morning. So she lived a very long life, Piper, and That's we took good. good care of her too. Oh, and I remember how shy that doggy used to be when she was first here. And Aww. we would have these staring matches that would I would help break the ice and. She was loving me ever since. There were times when she would claw at my legs only when I was not wearing my pants. <laughs> because she because she was trying to play with me. She was trying to play with me. <laughs> that sounds cute. Yeah, good to celebrate her life. Yeah, Piper, when she was uh, when she was energetic and young, she was a happy fun puppy. A happy fun dog. Like she was she loved playing with me. <laughs> thank yeah, thank you, Hussein. I'm glad that, like, you'd think that I'd be, like, trying and being, like, mopey over the whole thing, but here's the thing, we knew it was coming since she's an old dog and her health was declining, so we, we were preparing for it, we already prepared for that, for that eventuality. It's still very sad that she had to go, but she's in doggy heaven, running around in the plains and hills that are probably infinite in mass and size. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. And she had this beautiful fur, like orange, and like I think it was like orange and white fur. I don't quite know the specific tint of orange. We should have had a Piper montage. Oh, I don't have any pics of her, sadly. Not on me, anyway. <laughs> okay, that's all right. But enough of that. Enough of that stuff here. Let, let's talk. Let's get back to the tie dying. I see that. Uh, okay. So. This is what I did on the sleeve. I'm gonna do it to the other side now. Mm -hmm. So basically what I did is I put a bunch of rubber bands down the center yeah. and tried to make them as tight as I could. And that will be like, a st make sure that the section is white so that it's like, um, 
more strips instead yeah. of all blending together like a mess. And while you're at It'll it, help and while you're doing your tithey thing, how are things going on in your life, Shay? <laughs> My life has been pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, I've been having a pretty chill weekend so far. This morning I went out to brunch with my friend and we were just hanging out. We we're writing because just fun. Uh, that is fun to us. <laughs> oh yes, having a wonderful brunch with, with my, with your compatriot, your compadre. It was most excellent. Okay, whenever I hear, I'm, uh, old jokes aside, whenever I hear the word brunch, I think of fancy stuff because it, it's a fancy term. It's like, yeah, I guess it's just like late breakfast. I had bacon and cheddar waffles. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Hussein, she was talking about how during her day today, she was having brunch with her friend, which pretty much a fancy term for late breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and what were you guys? Oh, what were you guys writing? Oh, that's what he's asking. Okay. <laughs> um, I like writing just for fun, like yeah. creative writing. So I really want to write a book, but let's see if I can actually finish something for once because uh, I like to start things and not finish them. <laughs> I know the feeling. Mm-hmm. I know I've I know I've managed to finish writing a few stories myself, and that feeling when you've finished writing a story is just oh that's so good that's so good like oh that's a relief and something else like I'm a fellow I'm a fellow fan of writing creative writing and it is fun it is good fun I haven't been able to get around to that in some time because mm -hmm. I've been so focused on work helping out around the house slips. Those are the big three for that's that's the big three for me. It's been that way for a long time now. Yeah, I've, I haven't really had the motivation to do anything like that too recently. It's kind of it was nice to just sit down and focus on doing that one thing though, oh, because yeah, like got me back in the groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for autistic folks like me especially, being able to sit down and focus on doing one thing that I really like to do. Oh, that is a great feeling. Before I know it, time like just loses all meaning, and then by the time, I, then when I stop, I look at the clock, and suddenly it's the next morning. <laughs> okay, I'm, like saturation, <laughs> it's an exaggeration. I swear. Mhm. Mm all right. More or less. <laughs> now let's not forget, folks. We still have that interview coming up featuring Moon Man and its Fire Phantom. And the time is actually. Going quicker than I expected, but <laughs> once I get the rubber bands down, I should go pretty quickly. Yes, and speaking of things that are coming up, allow me to show you the bracket for the upcoming tournament, which again will begin at 6 p.m. Eastern, so we got less than an hour. So let's uh, bring in that awesome bracket. And here we are. Now, Take note, ladies and gentlemen. We'll only be streaming five of these matches. The rest of these, uh, the rest of the matches will be played off screen. Now, first off, we have Midweek Gaming versus M22 Alpha, and then we'll have our. Then we'll be playing the. Se we'll be showing the second semifinal matchup, which will feature either XV Official or LD2 versus N7 Phantoms or M22 Synergy. So you can see why we picked uh, those two players from those two teams to be interviewed. And then we got, of course, the semifinals and the finals. Five matches. And look at the bracket here. This is looking positively stacked. We got all sorts of strong teams. And we got some new ones here, like Breakdown, Amethyst. I don't know what they're like. They'll, I, I, I want to I see if I, 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 I tongue tied. I'm hoping that they reach the semifinals so that we can see what they're like. Same could be said for, let's see. Ah, oh, yes, we got. A couple more M22 guys. We got two of them, actually. Two M22 guys. We got a bit of a group going. <laughs> let's see if one of them can make it to the semis. Or the, let's see. <laughs> like, like, That's a challenge. Yeah, that'll be a heck of a challenge because we got bad players and Stolt and Pepper as the two strongest teams of the bunch. And let me tell you, they are strong. Now, t oh, what was my bet for Team Kinetic? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Somewhere around there, I believe. Uh, I'm looking at the chat here. I think that might have been that uh, 
that. <laughs> Let's see if Team Kinetics can pull through for me. <laughs> okay, finished. Oh, tying uh, up the shirt. All let's right, let's get look. back. <laughs> let's get back to let's get back to Shay here, so that we can see what's going on. Okay. Ah, I'm nervous. It's gonna. Oops! Ah, I forgot oh. to put my gloves back on. Get your gloves on. Get your gloves on. Quick. <laughs> I took them off because it was like hard to tie them with it. Yeah, just remember to turn them back up, put them back on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh goodness, okay. uh, fire didn't uh, kind of put the mic there a little bit. Let me. Uh, there we go. Just a slight minor adjustment. I don't want to be too loud, otherwise, otherwise I'm going to be clipping the mic and it's going to sound really loud and obnoxious and not fun. Will this cap come off? That is the question. That is a fair question. Oh, oh okay. That'll, okay. Yes. That is the answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just emphatic yes. all over. <laughs> Okay. I don't think I'm gonna do yellow yet. Stick with these. Yeah. And I guess we'll just I have do no, that. Yeah. <laughs> I have noticed that uh, tie dye uses the primary colors mainly: red, yellow, blue. Yeah, I did notice yeah. that uh, Milk Gang will be taking on bad players. I wish you got. I wish bad play. I wish Milk Gang the best of luck. And thank you, Kabuki. Kabuki, <laughs> it's always nice to see you, man. Oh, how you doing? Hope the military life is treating you well. <laughs> I, we don't see Kabuki a lot in the Slips community, so when we do. <laughs> I just smile. <laughs> I'm just so happy because he's a veteran Slips member and he's a cool dude. Oh, We love Kabuki here. <laughs> ah. Okay, the biggest tip if anyone is ever tie-dyeing is to just put as much dye as you can because the worst mistake you can make is not having much enough dye. Like, I've seen it so many times where people will like put just the tiniest bit of dye on just the top of the fabric instead of soaking it all in. The end, it just does not look, turn out that nice. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Put in lots of tie dye. And also, Dark Temple. Dark Temple, you misunderstand. I like. I wish you the best. Granted, Bad Players is a very, very strong team, but I'm but that whole I wish you the best was out of good faith. Prolapsed? Oh, goodness. Uh. Uh. Not sure if I want to know. Oh, okay. Maybe prolapse is another word for getting. beaten. for getting creamed or beaten or. Yeah. Oh, goodness, oh, no. Kabuki. Uh. Be careful, alright, man? Yeah. We all know what happened in January with the, with Washington D.C. We all know what happened. We don't need to go into the details on that. The details are very, very clear in, as it is. Hopefully, Kabuki wasn't there in Washington when it happened. I'd imagine not. Yeah. Anyways, let's uh, return to the de let's return to uh, something positive here, like the colors. Oh, the colors, the colors. Very so galaxy nice. s. I'm just gonna pat it around a bit. These colors kind of go well together, so if it gets a little messy, it's not that bad. It'll just be purple. Mm, yes, yes. And it seems to mostly be purple. <laughs> purple, purple. God, I love the purple. I want to try and get it in these mm -hmm. little crevices. Yes. And actually, I think I'm pretty much finished. Wait. What do you think? Very. It took. <laughs> oh it... my god. Whoa, whoa. Look how big. It's it, very it's messy. It's all over. Wow. Okay. No, it I'm looks here cool, in my but face. it's also all over. I thought it was just be like on the front, not the whole darn shirt. Yeah, no. There's a reason why you're supposed to do this outside. Yeah. I yeah, explain oh that one. Why, yeah, explain that one. Why do they do tie dye outside? Uh, there's a lot. There's okay. a lot. <laughs> um, there's a lot of extra dye that I'm just gonna have to take care of after this, and it's oh, 
Okay, it's pretty much all purple, so hopefully. Kind of this is blue not... from this angle, from my perspective here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and put it into this bag because it has to dry. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! That's a lot. That is a if lot. If this gets on my carpet, that would not be good. Okay, never mind. It's gonna get on my carpet. Oh yeah. Oh no, it went to the carpet. That's why you double layer the bag. I did double layer the bag, but the bag is getting on the die. Oh no. Oh this no. This is not good. Okay. Well Um blah, blah, blah. Oh I hear the dripping. I heard the dripping. I thought I heard the dripping. I thought I heard the dripping. Okay. Okay, so Oh you're not good. Okay. Maybe I could have thought this out a little better. I have this. Oh, there oh. goes the light! <laughs> Tied on light, baby! Tied on um, light! Everyone. Okay. All right. So. No, nice. Wait, no, no. It's on my All desk. Right. And my. It looks <laughs> like I'm just holding a bunch of. Dog dookie or something. Like, oh my gosh! Should I just hold this for the rest of the stream? Because I don't know what to do with it. Um, I'll put it right here because <laughs> I have some fabric. I'll try and tie it and then get back to it. Honestly, I, saying, I was expecting a fun time, and I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed in the slightest. <laughs> we got a good, um, we got a cool tie dye shirt out of it, and along with a fun mess. I I'm looking at myself in the camera, and it does not do it justice how much liquid is just on this. Oh god. This is just a plastic trash bag, by the way, too, so when I lift it up, it's probably all just gonna slip off. Which I love. It takes- the instructions say wait about like six to eight hours, so... Yeah, you might wanna that's how hang long that sucker somewhere. To dry. Um, <laughs> I think when we go into the timing, um, okay, I got some on my face, I love that. Hey, you got uh, a blue when we go into, <laughs> yeah. when we go into When we go into the timing to wait for the, our interviewer, interviewees to get into the call, I will get some Clorox wipes to try and clean this up a little bit. Like I said, indeed, Hussein. <laughs> Far out. Hey, I actually got the sign right there. <laughs> I, you, you missed it earlier, but I was trying to do a like a seventies joke. I went for the peace sign and accidentally went for the rock and roll sign. I mean, it kind of works, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So while uh, Shay here tries to clean up her mess, <laughs> oh dear <laughs> lord, <laughs> 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 we're gonna get things ready for the interview. All right, <laughs> so that's why we big thank you to Shay for making that cool tie dye shirt. A little kid somewhere in the world is gonna love it to bits. I am well, no, I need to my ties. The it, shirt? Yeah, the shirt. I I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if a little kid gets his hands on that shirt one day and he'll love and they'll love it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. When oh, I see. Yeah, because yeah. it's a little boy Hopefully shirt. Hopefully, it turns out well. Keep, uh, if you're not in the Discord already, join the Discord and I'll be sure to update all of you how it turns out. <laughs> yeah, send a picture to the Slice of Life channel on the Discord. Like, please. Yeah. I want to see the finished work. Dry it up. I'll, like, I want to see what it looks like. It, it's got to look good. No, Shane's yeah. going to win. Yeah. It's a blue boy shirt. <laughs> no, it's my size. Oh. It's, I got it my size. I just found it in the little boy section because... Oh. Honestly, I was having the most fun in that section. That section at Walmart <laughs> has probably the best clothing I've ever seen. I was so close to buying a Minecraft, like a white Minecraft shirt, and then I didn't. <laughs> Minecraft tie-dye. Oh god, tie-dye creeper. That's very, that's very nice tie-dye you have there. It's far out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would it be a shame if someone were to... Okay, there we go. Got the joke out of the way. Now, we're gonna get things ready for the interview while... Shay here cleans herself up. <laughs> in the meantime, enjoy the music that we have playing for you in the background, courtesy of Monster Cat. You can thank the croc for set the croctopus for setting that up for us. So, on that note, we'll be getting things ready. See you guys in a few minutes.
And wait a minute, this ain't the right scene. This is the right scene, there we go. Hello, we're back ladies and gentlemen, and we have our interviewees. We have to all to Shay's left, it's Fire Phantom from the N7 Phantoms. And to Shay's right, Moon Man from XV Official. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. And a big thanks to Shay for bringing in the interview. Okay, hey guys, welcome to the interview. <laughs> Say hey back. Hello. What's up? There you are. <laughs> okay. In a hypothetical 1v1, who do you think would win between you two? Oh, uh, you didn't even like ease our audience into the. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> That's the first know. question. <laughs> I thought we were getting right in, like a warm up or something. Yeah. We're getting right into it. Um. I guess I'll go <laughs> first. Um, I'm not a very go ahead, man. man. So. I don't know, I'm, I'm letting Moon Man's gonna win. Sure. Oh. I'm not. I'm oh, not unanimous. <laughs> but okay. Sure, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moon Man's gonna. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. What got you two into Rocket League in the first place? Fire Phantom, why don't you go first? To be honest, it was just like friends just telling me about the game. And then, as I just started playing it more and more, I, I don't know, I just kind of grew on the game. And then, I could say a year ago now, then I started playing like professional. So. Fun. Okay, Moon Man, you, you're next. <laughs> um, I got into Rocket League because Carsock. It's a unique game. It's one of the only games that I can actually stand playing. Um. And the only game that I've actually stuck, even though I take frequent breaks. Yes, and it's not just car soccer. It is it's car soccer featuring rocket-powered cars with a gigantic bouncing ball, all while playing in a steel cage that the WWE would look at and tremble in fear. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So that goes into the next question. Is Rocket League your favorite video game? Fire Phantom? Oh, I don't know. Um, it honestly depends on the mood. I mean, if I'm playing good, then yes. If I'm playing terrible, and I honestly just like want to just uninstall the game, which everyone has had that feeling, then no. But if it's any game that's probably like a runner up, it got to be either Call of Duty or Minecraft. You know, you can never go wrong with Minecraft. But True. What about um, I'd say it's up there. It's or at least top three. It's not a game that I'll just like hop on and play by myself. I need my friends to play with me or I'm not playing at all. <laughs> what would your other two favorites be? Um, as of right now, say Rust is up there. And probably as number one would be I forget the name of it, and it's my number one pick. <laughs> okay. Mm, Moon Man uh, doesn't know his favorite game's name. It's called uh, <laughs> Curse, of, Curse of the Dead God. Yeah, it's, a it's a brand new game on Steam. Yep. Yeah. Find slips. Uh, come again? You got a little cut out there. Okay, how did the two of you find slips? Moon Man, you can go first. <laughs> um, I was browsing Reddit, and I saw it, joined, played tournament. <laughs> Phantom. <laughs> Honestly, browsed Reddit with my teammates, and we found it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys meet your teammates? Fire right, Phantom, you go ahead. Um... <laughs> So, before I played with N7, I was on another uh, esports team, which also played in this tournament, uh, or in Slips. I believe it was Starlet, but that's how I found Cole. So Cole and me transferred to N7, and Panther originally was on a different team for N7, but we were able to 
transmit over to our team, and that's how the three of us just came together. And then Wolf just showed up out of nowhere, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> cool. What about you, Moon Man? Um, well, from, I guess, our current roster, I met Hen in a different org two years back, I think. Two years or a year and a half. And then from there, I met Cam through Ken's. And then I met Matronix through just tryouts for XV. Yeah. So do you guys know your teammates in real life? Like, have you met in real life? <laughs> I have oh, no. not. I have no. not. I see. I see you. I see. Okay, what player on your guys' teams do you admire the most? Like, which player on the opposite team? On your own, on your, okay, on the opposite team. <laughs> Oh, then I gotta go look at the rosters. I don't know who's on his team. Um, hold on. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Press play. Don't pause. Oh, I see Mac play. Mac is not too bad, but Ken. Hmm. I don't know. Is it Mac <laughs> or Matronix that I've seen play? I don't know, it was one of the two, but like I saw him playing like one of the slips tournaments and they're pretty decent, so. But. Or to going up against one another, possibly, in the, in the tournament, in like uh, 15 minutes. Do we? Do we versus XV? I think. I think we go quarters. Or are we? Oh, let me look for Brett. Oh, we were. Yeah. You win. Oh, so that'll be fun. Who do you think will win? <laughs> Rooting for your own team, I hope. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Hopefully yeah? we win for it. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be close. Have faith in oh. your own team, please. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it can be pretty trash. Not gonna lie, but oh, we like, need the positive we energy. <laughs> yes, yes, we need positivity. <laughs> yeah, you gotta at least believe in yourself. If not, then probably won't <laughs> work out too well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so and we got some hype for the matchups coming up in the chat. Like, and I'm hyped for it too. I'm also, I'm hoping to see N7 and XV play against one another in the semis. Okay. Um, let's see. So how close would you say your team is? Each of your teams? Moon Man, how about you? I feel like I haven't heard as much from you. <laughs> how close are we? Like, like do you guys are team? friends? Like we yeah. shower together and stuff like that? Or? <laughs> yeah, like that would be like uh, very the most close. <laughs> Maybe like from one to ten. I mean... <laughs> I'll go full butt naked with Cam and Ken's and Megtronics. I'm down. Whoa, whoa, okay. whoa, 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 whoa. I'll do whoa. the same thing with Panther and Cole. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, so you Listen, guys are like team, team really bro's close. Always, the bros always got to be close. Everyone Just keep my socks on. Keep... Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a nine and a half, maybe? Because socks have to be on? I would say a 9.99, <laughs> but... Okay, fair enough. Looking at the bracket, have you guys looked at the bracket? <laughs> no, I just looked at it just now. Okay. I haven't looked at it too much. I, I barely started looking at who we're playing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> From experience, who do you think would make it to the final? To the finals? <laughs> From who you've uh, gone up against in the past? 
I don't think for I've yourself. Gone, I don't think I've gone <laughs> up against. We've gone up against any of the teams. We kind of took like a long break from from playing in the slips tournament at least. But I have seen N Seven. Think I don't know if it was them that threw a reverse sweep last time that I checked in, which was like months ago. I don't, oh, 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 we don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk about yeah, that. Yeah. So <laughs> next question. Okay. 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 I'm I'm hoping, hoping, yeah, I'm hoping they play good rock. I'm hoping all these teams play good rock the league, just because it's fun to play when you're, you know, you can feel yourself playing well. Um, it's always fun to play that. Yeah. No matter yes. if you win or lose. Yeah. That's true. That is very true. Now, I'll take this question here. Who would you say is the best player in the tournament? Um, Phantom, you want to take this one first? Oh, there's a lot of good players. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Personally, from who we played with, I forgot who, what team their name is. Um, but they have Zero Knight, Kona. And someone else. Their team's pretty good. I forgot their team name though. Um, ob obviously, bad players. They also have pretty good players. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty hard to choose one good player as the best. I mean, there's a lot of flaws that go into each player, but there's also a lot of positive things that can make a player better than one another. But it's just too, it's just very close to the side. Yeah, this is a threes tournament, so I don't expect you know any one player to really, really shine without backing up, you know, their two other teammates backing them up, allowing them to. Uh, you did you get cut out there, Moonman? Or did you... hello? You there? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> I think you got cut off a little bit. Um, I was saying, uh, since this is a threes tournament. You know, a lot of us rely on our teammates, and if any one of us is going to shine, it's it's really because our teammates are enabling us to, you know, perform at a better level than we can perform ourselves. Yeah, oh, that was so. really well said. I like that. Very well said. And as an amendment to what was said by Fire Phantom, I'm seeing in the chat here that team you were thinking of is Ya. Oh yeah, Ya is yeah. They're pretty good. I know that. We versed them twice so far in slips. The first time we won, and then the second time it, they, we kind of got reverse sweep by them. But mm. that's also another time we don't talk about. But <laughs> had, adjustments had to be made. <laughs> yeah, adjustments, Seems... quote unquote. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now, I now I believe we've got time for a couple more questions. I'm looking at the clock here. Yeah, we still got time. Say Okay. So, I know what you're saying about how each of the players, like, how well they do kind of depends on how the, your teammates are doing. But out of your own team, who do you think will be the MVP when you play today in the tournament? Uh, do you want me to go first? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I always rely on Cam. Mac. Uh, he's super solid. You know, very rarely is inconsistent. Uh, so if I just had to go with who would I rely on the most to be an MVP in you know our tournament, it's probably him. <laughs> How about you, Fire Phantom? Uh, I'll probably have to go with Panther. I mean, he's just like the solid core of our team. So as long as like we make sure that like we're able to adjust to what he's able to do, I mean, he, I'm pretty sure he'll end up MVP. I like that. Panther and Mac. MVPs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's look. I'm going to pick a random question. If you had to survive on a deserted island for a year, which teammate would you want to be with you there? And you can only pick one. And either one of you can go first, whoever wants to. Um, I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd stick with Cam, just because of consistency. Yeah. You know. Same players. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stick with Panther because I'm, <laughs> I mean, Cole could be smart in some situations, but Cole could also be really, really dumb. 
Oh, the Panther, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I see that. Somebody said the throw him into the bus. Pa- oh no. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Cole's a little. Cole, 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 I mean, if we're comparing Cole to Panther, Cole's kind of small brain compared to Panther. So is Wolf. Wolf is very, Wolf is the last person I'm choosing. I'm sorry, oh, no. Wolf. You're oh, no. Wolf, Wolf, you'll probably get me killed. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf, no. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that question kind of relies more on like how, how well you know each other rather than Rocket League skills and also like reliancy, like Moon Man, Moon Man was saying. <laughs> Saint says it's a deserted island. You might end up jumping them at one point. <laughs> Still, same answer. Um, I I've never argued with Cam over anything. Um, even when if we ever go through over replays and we have you know separate opinions about something it's always you know explain your reasoning and kind of figure things out and sometimes it's one of us you know admits we're wrong one of them is stuff like that it's i don't see myself ever arguing with cam or mctronics for that matter <laughs> so. so these teams seem pretty close nice yep. fire phantom I mean, you got anything to add <laughs> i mean our, our team doesn't argue, but we like to have different opinions that end up clicking in the end. So, I mean, one of us could bring up a like an idea, for example, but like, say I brought up an idea, but Panther could have like a alternation to that idea, which could work in the end. But it ends up clicking. So, right, right. Now I've got me another question here. Let's see if you could pick one player from another team to join your team. Who would it be? And in slips, you have no shortage of options, let me tell you. A Phantom, you want to take this one first? Or do you want Moon Man to take it first? Uh, Moon Man, you go. Because I'm going to need time to think this. Um, I don't I don't know who plays in the slips tournament anymore. Oh. So. Oh, Any player. You got to do your research. You got to do your research, man. Got to look up them players, them teams. Look up the competition. The only the only ever time I, I look up a look up a team is when I need to figure out who I need to DM to talk to. <laughs> no, that's not true. Yeah, I don't I don't you know no matter who we're playing it's we're playing you know Rocket League and we're playing our game so it doesn't matter who we play against we just try and play our game. Of course, it's saying bring it in. Like... Sorry about that. But it's saying <laughs> you can go. Yeah, we're being yeah here's the saying bringing in the safe choices with War being and Sir Knight. <laughs> Yeah, um, it really also depends on playstyle. I don't know a lot of the people's playstyles. I haven't tuned into slips tournaments recently. Um, there's sometimes there is big differences in playstyles that just don't mesh together. And even though they can all be, you know, you know, high GC3 SSL, and they just won't play well together. So I'd have to take a look. Uh, I'll get back to you guys on that. Like, I don't know, in a week or so. In a week? Okay. I'll be, I'll uh, hold you to that. <laughs> um, yeah, sounds like you guys need to be more active in the Discord server to me. <laughs> I mean, the only player that my team has really played with is Fruit. It was me, Panther, and Fruit. I mean, we, we got along pretty good, but we, I haven't played with anyone else besides Fruit now that I think about it from Slips. Like, for threes. Yes, this whole this whole part of the interview drives home the importance of scouting out the competition. You never know if the team, if the person you're scouting is your next opponent or your next partner. Now, on that note, let's see, we're about five six minutes away from showtime, from the start time here in the tournament. I think we got time for maybe one more question. Another one. Let's see if we can bring in our best, bring in our best one. Save, I hope you're bringing the best for last. We're saving the best for last, I mean. Because we've, uh, we've gotten some good ones, mind you. Anyone oh. in the chat also can input any questions they might have for these players, by the way. Just want to put that out there. Um, <laughs> another question I have is, what would you do with the prize money if you won? <laughs> Uh, Good man. What about, or who was saying? Chick Fil A meal. Chick Fil A. Okay. <laughs> Fire Phantom. What about you? Uh, <laughs> probably, probably food. 
Either that or save it for college, because I need the money bad where I'm going. Okay, so we got a cool, very interesting question from from Hussein concerning N7 Phantoms in particular. How did Luna become N7's manager? You know, little Luna. Um, honestly, she kind of just like plopped out of nowhere. Like, to be honest, it's more been recently, like for the past like few months, it's more Wolf doing the stuff for us, as long with Panther, like as in, as a assistant i can't talk for whatever reason but yeah luna hasn't done much if we're comparing her to a manager for n7 for our team i, I don't mean like throwing her under the bus but if i'm being reasonable here like she hasn't done much for the team oh. it's been more wolf and panther doing stuff for us oh, oh. I, I to be honest with you i don't even think any of us considered her manager recently to be honest <laughs> it's been more wolf oh oh but, I, uh, Luna may be may expect Luna to fire back if I know her, and I do. Oh no, I'm ready. Don't worry. All right. Well, big thank you to you both for coming in for this interview. And now, while we still have time, let's show the bracket one more time and talk a little bit more about the matches that are to come. All right. So. As we all know, we have the round of 16 lined up and ready to go. We got the bad players taking on Milk Gang, Mid Waste Gaming versus M22 Alpha, XV Official versus LD2, N7 Phantoms versus M22 Synergy, Sultan Pepper versus Power Gaming, Team Kinetic versus Chaotic Esports, Esports, gonna say it right, Inferno versus Frost 4, and Imperium versus Breakdown Amethyst. Now, as we all know from Slip's history, we don't stream all the matches these days. There's too many. There's, there's so many matches. We cannot show them all. So we've narrowed it down to five. We'll be streaming Midweek Gaming versus M22 Alpha, the second semifinal match. No, the second quarterfinal match, excuse me. Then all of the semifinals and, and of course, the final. So that's five matches. Now, our first match will, of course, be M2, no, 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 Midweast Gaming versus M22 Alpha. Now, these, now, um, Shay, you, did you take, did you by any chance uh, get some info on these two teams? And for uh, that matter, yeah, like I said, Midweast Gaming versus M22 Alpha. And Shay, Hussein's asking, who do you think's gonna win this particular matchup? Mm. I am. I don't know anything about M22 Alpha. I only know Middle East Gaming, but I know they're pretty good. So yeah, I'm going for Middle East. Don't. They were like new a couple weeks ago too. Yeah, don't be fooled by Middle East Gaming's rank in MMR. It is uh, not a description, uh, not an accurate description of their skill. They are really, really good. They are better than what their MMR suggests. Trust me, we know. We've seen them play. M22 Alpha. Bit of, a, bit of a new team on the block, so honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing these two teams duke it out and what is sure to be an excellent game. <laughs> and Twisted, hey, and I mean Twisted, Tendon, hey, you missed the tie-dying interview. Those are two great segments. Uh, don't worry, you'll be able to catch the pre-show as part of the VOD, which will be posted on YouTube soon after the tournament is over with. Now, on that note, we're just about ready to... We're just about ready to go here. We got a couple minutes left before we get things rolling with the main tourney, the main show, the main event of the evening. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. We got a whole slew of teams ready to play. Honestly, I'm expecting lots of superb Rocket League action, intense, intense moments, exciting thrills and suspense and unexpected moments. I'm expecting an upset or two as well. Shay, who do you think is going to win the whole thing? The whole thing? Um, I want to root for one of the teams of captains that we have in the studio right now. I'll go for N7 or XV. Uh, but I'll... Pick <laughs> I one, actually... girl! <laughs> I... I know Mac, and we were just talking to Moon Man, so I am just gonna go with XV. <laughs> Sorry, Fire Phantom. <laughs> Upset coming to you guys shortly after this break. 
<laughs> we should be. That'll be fun. Hmm. All right. Now we're about ready to. We're about ready to roll here. So it's six o'clock. You all will probably know who I'm rooting for. I placed, like, I bet on Team Kinetic, so you know my answer. So we're gonna get the countdown going. We're gonna get ready for the main show. Thank you very much for watching. This is GJ and Shay. Excuse me, Shay and GJ, because she's the host. She gets first bill. Saying oh, yeah. thank you very much for watching. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the main show. Cause you are a stranger
All right. How is everybody doing? Welcome back, Slips fans. It is weekly tournament number 26. I'm your host and play-by-play -play caster today, the Croctopus. And joining me on the casting desk is GJ. GJ, how are you today? I am doing great. Absolutely great. I came in, uh, fun fact, I came into the, I, I woke up earlier this morning, not expecting to cast at all, but life finds a way, as they say. And I'm more than happy to bring in what, li what little casting skills I have available to me for this evening. Of course, you've got the play-by-play, -play, you've got the skills for that, you've got the hype, and I'll bring in the color and a little bit of my, a little bit of hype as well to keep things going, keep you wonderful folks entertained, because we got some excellent matchups waiting for you, and we're going to do them justice. First up is Midweeks Gaming versus M22 Alpha. Now, as we all know, M Midweeks Gaming surprised us and then some when they first appeared on the slip scene. Turns out their MMRs and ranks, uh, they're, they don't really tell us what kind of skills they actually got, because they're actually pretty good. <laughs> they're actually pretty good at this. Yeah, Midweast Gaming uh, coming in with a couple Champ 1, Champ 3 players, uh, according to their ranks, absolutely at the Grand Champ level, uh, possibly up towards the Supersonic Legend level. Um, they're going to be uh, probably my favorite for this game. M22 Alpha here, at, fielding a team of Yoshi, Nimdar, Fuzz, and Savage as the substitute. Uh, looks like we may even have... Uh, all the players in the lobby now, so we do for sure have Fuzz, Nimdar, and Yoshi playing for M22 Alpha. Two champ ones and a champ three according to the ranks. We'll see if that ends up being accurate. And we're going to have, oh, excuse me, Flyzik, Savage, and Panzler for Midweast Gaming. Yes, yes, we got a full lobby here. Ten people. We're about ready to start. Honestly, I'm not gonna, I, I don't think these players are going to wait any longer than they need to. I don't want us to wait any longer than, I, than we have to. Let's get to the studio. Let's get to the stadium. Let's get started. We already got players on the field. Croc, bring in that play-by-play -play that you do so well. All right, we've got Midweast Gaming in blue, M22 Alpha in orange. Let's see what these two teams can do early on here as Fuzz starts off the game on with control on the right side of the field, gets it by Panzler Savage up for the pass, going to be able to put a soft ball onto the back wall. Yoshi not able to finish it. Can't find the inside of the post there. Posting out, and uh, Midweast Gaming are thinking their post there. Panzler now in the left side corner trying to start a play. Yoshi there first to defend and get the ball all the way to the other half of the field. Fuzz now pops it up center for Savage. Savage going to get beat here by Flyzik. Flyzik now. Pa uh, Panzler and Aura up at the same time for Midweast Gaming there. Not going to be the greatest. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Not going to be the greatest team play there. Now Aura and Yoshi come together on the left side wall looking to see where the ball is going to pop out here. Fuzz easily defended on the near post. Flyzik comes in hot, though, with a 50. Keeps control of the ball for Midweast Gaming here. Yoshi now clearing it out of harm's way into the other half of the field. Savage with a spike down. What a pass from Yoshi, and what an even better shot from Savage here. Goes up off the right side wall, spins that car around, gets his hood on the ball, and spikes it down 68 miles per hour for the first goal of game one in this series. M22 go up 1-0. to zero. What a goal, huh, GJ? That was a good start. A very, very good start. Now, pretty soon we're going to have a poll in the chat so that you got lovely folks at home can decide who do you think will win game one. Poll will be up shortly. All right, and as we're waiting for the poll, we've got M22 on the attack again here, looking for a second goal to go up two goals in the series, two goals in the game, playing a best of three series here in this round. So we're going to see... Hopefully three games of Rocket League here if these two teams are as even as I think they're going to be. Savage now on the attack, looking for a pop out into the center or on the backboard to defend that. Savage will be first here, but double commits with Fuzz. This is going to kill the attacking pressure here. Flies it controls on the right side of the field. Yoshi with a good defensive play to not get flicked there. Panzler now is going to see Flyzik on the right side of the field. Finds a pass, can't find the shot. No shot there, and M22 Alpha are now re recollecting in their defensive end. Flyzik throws another one off the back wall, and so does Aura. 
Savage, though, there to play defense well. Now Panzler, last one back in the net for Midweast Gaming. Not going to get beat by Savage on the soft shot and no boost. Savage looking to turn here, pops it out into the center. Panzler now pops one real high. Fuzz a little cheated up. His third man is going to be able to get a touch, but still dangerous. Not out of danger yet. Fuzz on the back wall with Savage RL. Another double commit here from M22. Does get the ball out of harm's way. And M22 now kind of struggling here. But Flyzik passes it straight down to Savage. That was almost a really bad touch there. Flyzik almost handing M22 a goal. Now Flyzik down to Savage again. Savage with an easy save is going to get the demo on Panzler. Gets a little bit of play, uh, a little player off the field for Midweast Gaming. And now trying his best. To start some more attacking pressure, Yoshi's going to be into the corner for this one. Aurora is first to it and gets it out. That's going to be into M22's half of the field. A lot of ping pong between these two teams right now. A lot of good passing plays, but a lot of ping pong as well. Just hitting the ball back and forth. Uh, Aaron's shot from Aura goes almost into the net. Luckily, there was someone there on the far post as you need to have. Fuzz easily defended on the near post. Not a lot of crazy, crazy good shots, crazy good opportunities. A lot of just systematic rotation in Rocket League here. We're going to probably see more empty net goals in this series than you're used to. As these two teams don't seem to be sending uh, high-powered shots onto the net. Kind of just playing the offensive rotation, trying to break the team down. Good attempt there from Flyzik, but Fuzz is just there for the 50. Uh, but they're just trying to break each other down and find players out of position to get an easy shot on net instead of looking for a snipe or an awesome passing play at the moment. Let's see if these two teams can bring bring us a little more action here. Aura with a rough touch pops out into his own box, luckily defended there. M22 might have been able to have an easy goal there if their first man was playing a little further up. A little bit of a double commit here from M22 as both players end up in the corner. Savage rotating ball side. Yoshi a little awkward now on the wall, does get the touch, a pass back out. Yoshi may be in control here. Panzler looking for another touch. Yoshi looks for the ceiling shot. Dunk can't find it. Fuzz now back across to Yoshi. Yoshi gets beat by Flyzik. Flyzik taps one down. Almost gives away possession, but Savage very awkward. Unable to read that as well as he wanted to. Soft shot on net. Easily defended by Fuzz. Savage now. Pops one up. Trying to get by Aura. Does. Not going to be able to get by two, but Fuzz in for the rebound. And that is going to be the second goal of the game. Just 14 seconds left. He's got that awesome heat seeker goal explosion. Beats both the players and the post there. Gets it right over Flyzik. Cheats up a little bit on the far post. Breaks down. Break down in the rotation. Leaves M22 up 2-0 to zero against Midweast Gaming in the first game of the series. Absolutely. Well, I did not expect Midweast to be uh, on the back foot at this point. You'd think they'd be... The ones uh, putting M22 Alpha on the receiving end of a beating, but no, it is the opposite. M22 Alpha with an upset game one win. What a way to start off the tourney, folks. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Mid Weiss looking very slow here to me. M22 doing a good job of taking advantage of the breakdowns in the defensive rotation. Two pretty easy goals for M22 Alpha here. Um... Fuzz is a little bit less easy. Had to beat two defenders that were still in net. But Flyzik, unfortunately, just a little off of that far post. Not able to get back in time. Super awkward save to make. But there's there's been a lot of shots. They just haven't really been uh, saucy. They haven't really been that saucy. We got eight shots coming out from Midweast Gaming on seven saves from M22. Uh, which means that at least Midweast Gaming is putting them on net and forcing them to make a save. But a lot of them are... 40 miles an hour or less, really easily defended by someone in net. Like I said, they're just trying to break down that rotation, whereas we have seven shots from M22 Alpha and only two saves from Midweast Gaming and two goals, which leaves three of those shots unaccounted for. Meaning that M22 Alpha may be having a little bit tougher of a time than Midweast Gaming. Getting these balls on net, they really got to do a better job at shooting with some power, both of these teams, if they want to see the score go up a little bit more. But threes is a little bit more of a defensive game. It's not like we're playing twos here. So... We'll have to see if the defense of M22 Alpha can uh, stand up to Midweast Gaming yet again and go for another shutout here. We've got the lobby ready. Players should be getting to the field pretty soon. And we're going to see if M22 can take the sweep or if Midweast Gaming has a little bit of fight left in them. What's your pick, GJ? 
better question as we get into the game here. Don't worry, we'll get you guys in the studio and... Okay, lady, okay, so... If you're wondering what happened there... Well, don't worry, we'll get that sorted. But anyways, as for the pick... Honestly, I don't know. I, I was I was thinking in Midwest until they lost in game one. Like, until they straight up lost the game. I was like, what? I did not see that one coming at all. So I'm thinking M2-2 may take it, but it's going to go to a game three. Mark my words. Okay, so you think that uh, you think that Midwest will show some fight in this game? I would have to agree with you there. I think Midwest will win this game. Savage trying to prove us wrong there. Panzer with a good save. Yoshi off the back wall, going to be looking for a second touch. Looks for the shot instead of the pass. Maybe better uh, better off hitting the pass there. But does make Aura make an awkward save into the corner. Fuzz now in the middle of the field, ready for Savage's pass. That is going to be an easy goal for the first goal of this game. Savage bumps it right around Aura there, off the wall, gets the touch on the side wall. Flyzik already up the wall, not able to defend there. Panzler, of course, coming in late from the far post side of the net, not able to get to the shot in time. Easy goal for Fuzz. And M22 go up 1-0 to zero in game two. Yoshi now chance. looking to make it 2-0 early, it looks like. Fuzz with a nice flick. Flyzik puts it out to the left side corner. Very close one there. Panzler, almost a little bit of a save there. Probably not the touch he wanted. Uh, Yoshi coming back in the net a little bit quick, a little bit awkward. Could have been a good offensive opportunity. Either way, Midwest Gaming in a little bit of control here. That is decimated by Yoshi as he comes in, throws that one off the back wall, and now awkward trying to get out of their own half as Midwest Gaming. Flyzik turns, gets the boost, can't get the good 50 on the ball. Yoshi with good pressure here on the attack for M22. Panzler now gets the flip reset. Not going to be a hard shot. Should be a good save. Savage now coming with a little bit of a double commit there. But luckily for M22, they seem to be able to pick it back up and get back into position. Fuzz now. Awkward touch off the wall. No boost to get back. Yoshi is going to be there in time. And this is going to give M22 some time to breathe. Easy clear here from Fuzz off of the Aaron shot from Aura. And now Pan Panzler puts it off the back wall looking for a teammate. Flies it. Not able to get it on net. Not sure if that was defended or if it was just a mistouch. Either way, not on net. Flyzik does get the devil onto Savage, so a little bit of a three-on-two advantage here for Midwest for a second. Panzler not able to take advantage of the pass to him there. Could have been an easy goal with one person respawning, getting to net in an awkward rotation. Flyzik, great pass there. Panzler's got to capitalize on those, at least, makes at least make contact and put it on net. And now we've got Aura and Panzler on the attack. Panzler's going to leave it for Flyzik. Flyzik back into the corner. No boost here. Gets one touch. Ops to flip into it. Had a lot of space. Probably could have taken two to three touches there on that pass to make it a little bit better for his team. Ends up kind of throwing the ball away. And the opportunity with the shot on net gets demoed for his efforts. Can't find the back, though. The post saves the ball again. And Midwest Gaming just not able to beat the post right now. Double commit on defense is not going to do well for them either. Panzler... Whiffing a ball that he had an hour to get to. Fuzz off the back wall. Aura's got to touch this. No way. Oh, and the double touch goes too far. The rebound shot from Savage. Not going to be on net. Yeah, really sloppy Rocket League, GJ. I've seen both of these teams play better. Th this is the same M22 uh, from the previous week, correct? Uh, maybe. There's more than one M22 team. For example, in, in, in the slip scene. For example, M22 Synergy. Okay, Synergy may be the main team. They may be the main team, but I'm uh, I'm unsure. Either way, Midwest Gaming, very, very sloppy Rocket League compared to what we've seen them play before. I would like to see them step it up a little bit. Crisper plays, crisper passing and shooting mainly. Flysick now coming in might have a chance, not going to be able to off of Fuzz def Fuzz's defensive touch. But yeah, just really kind of sloppy the rotations are good everyone's in the right spot everyone's making their touches normally where they need to but the touches that they make just aren't the best they've got to be able to set up offense from the defensive zone here and they've got to really be able to um capitalize on their offensive opportunities as there's still plenty of game left plenty of time for midweeks to tie this up i want to see a tie game at this point i want to see not a one-sided affair, but some intense, close Rocket League action. And wait a minute. I, oh, wow. Asking you shall receive the opposite of the curse right here. Aura. With a little bit of help. Um, and I can't even see the name very well from the OBS feed, but 
Great assist Panzler. from their team. Panzler, thank you. That was a great one. And I like that gold explosion. The heart with the hands. That, that is sweet. That is really yeah. sweet. Very good touch there from Panzler to beat two defenders of M22. Leaves the net basically open for Aura. Aura able to just fl side flip into that one and roll it in. And now we got a tie game here. 20 seconds left. Flyzik a little bit awkward. Is going to be able to get the 50 on Yoshi. And now Savage with a shot opportunity off the back wall is not going to find its way into the net. Panzler low boost going to be able to get it by Fuzz. This could be it here. Flicks it by one. Bar down. Not into the net though. Flyzik not able to send it home. Aura, however, on the sidewall, quick. Gets the ball back in for offensive pressure. Flies it, pops one towards net. Not enough time. We go to overtime here in game two. Overtime. I get to say that early. <laughs> yeah. Aura almost ending overtime just five seconds into its short affair. However, we're now seeing M22 on the counterattack as Aura was not able to get that one under the crossbar. Fuzz now keeping pressure here. Aura intercepts the pass. Panzler looking for a teammate probably down low. Aura should be there. Panzler on the wall makes it a little awkward. Flies it can't go for that shot. Now we've got M22 on the attack. No, we do not. Panzler with a good interception there in midfield is going to send the ball back down. Unfortunately, kind of gives away possession to, back to M22. But at least it wasn't in his defensive zone. Aura good clear there on the near post. Was a dangerous shot coming in from Fuzz. Panzler now with off the back wall. Aura is not going to be able to make it to that shot in time. Savage now in control off the left wall. No boost here. Has to have a teammate come in and help him. Yoshi not able to get a great touch, and that's going to be the attack broken down. These players, every time we get to them, I swear they have, like, no boost. Panzler there with 73 boost as we switch to him. So that was a little bit of a, little bit of a change up there. I swear, man, so these players just seem like they have no boost this game. Everyone's playing slow. They're, the touches are soft. They're a little weak. They're sloppy. I got. I want to see some better Rocket League here. I know these teams can do it. And if Midweast Gaming does take game two, I'd like to see it happen in game three here. Flies like rushing back on defense now, allowing Panzler to go for that ball in the midfield. Does beat one. Does get the second touch. Savage there to clear it out into the corner. Flies like puts it back down for pressure. Now Panzler looking for a teammate in the middle, maybe looking for a bump. No, looking for the shot himself. Fuzz with a good defensive play there. Does not end up hitting it into Panzler to get dunked on. That would have been really unfortunate way to end the overtime if you're M22. Flies it, rotates ball side there. Makes Panzler a little awkward, doesn't get the touch he wants. And now they're going to have to just bang the ball away instead of take possession. Fuzz trying to get a soft touch back. Panzler interrupts it. Now Savage is in control, but in his goalie box, gets bumped. Aura... Trying to get around Flyzik, not able to. Can't get the ball back on his hood for a flick on net. Now, a, a chance for M22, but that one goes over Fuzz's head. Not able to cut that out and keep the pressure. Savage now looking to get it by Aura. Aura looking for a pass into the center. Panzler off the back wall. Flyzik coming in. Going to get beat by Savage. Savage now needs to beat Aura, who's awkward. Does get a good touch off the wall. Panzler gets a good demo on the way back. To kind of clear some space on the field for Midweast, the M22 there to play defense on the counterattack. GJ, two minutes and 43 seconds of overtime, and we're still deadlocked 1 1. Who do you think takes the overtime based off of what you've seen so far? Now, this is the kind of match that I really wanted to see. This is better than what I hoped for when going into game one. A close, intense, exciting matchup between two teams of apparently even skill level at this moment. Midweast clearly has shaken off some of that rust from earlier. And M22 Alpha riding high from the uh, confidence-boosting goals they've been getting, and that and that game one win on top of that. But this, but some, I, I, if I uh, remember seeing it right, some careless mistakes here and there led to this overtime situation. And now those mistakes are not being made right now. They're not being made again. So they're just getting better as they play. <laughs> and that's awesome, and I love it. I love it when teams improve as they play during a match on the t on a tourney stream. You don't. Yeah, Midweast looking like they are starting to warm up here as Aura gets a beautiful pass oh. out to Panzler coming in at 100 miles an hour, just smacking that ball down. Goal ending up being 75 miles an hour. Absolute screamer to end overtime right here. And Midweast Gaming take game two in the series is tied one to one. One to one indeed, and that was a hard fought one to one. It was a hard fun win for Midweeks Gaming. They had to really, they had to shake off the rust in a hurry in order to get a chance at that win.
and they managed to clinch it. So now we're gonna get things ready for game two, and it's going to game be three. exciting. Uh, game three. Sorry, I lost. I lost count. This makes so exciting. I lost track of the count. Anyways. All good. Midweast Gaming, definitely the better team on the field during that game, in my opinion. Uh, a couple of offensive opportunities that really should have been goals with people at their level kind of just hit the side post or maybe didn't get a good touch on it. Probably looking at more of a 5-2 to two score line here if both of these teams were playing the way that I think that they can play. M22 Alpha played just about the same game that they played in Game 1. Uh, Midweek is just able to step it up for game two. M22 is going to need to be a little bit speedier mm -hmm. and a little bit more precise on their touches if they're going to want to beat Midweek's Gaming in game three here. I think it can happen. My pick is going to go with Midweek's Gaming still. I'll stick with it from the first round. And, uh, you know, just, a, just another look here. 15 shots from Midweek's Gaming. They might not be putting as much spice on them as I'd like them to, but they're putting the ball on net. And if you put the ball on net more than the other team, most of the times you're going to win. Unless the other team is just crazy and only gets like four shots on net, but all four of them are goals. You just got to put the ball on net, but you got to put it on net with purpose. And these two teams are ready, fighting for that purpose. Now, as we go into game three, Midwest Gaming M22 Alpha tied 1-1 in the series, looking for the game winner here uh, to see who moves on to the quarterfinals. Pans are now in the corner, not going to be able to get the pressure there. Aura, though, with a good touch. Fuzz, last one back, is able to get the 50 on Flyzik. Good attempt there from Flyzik. And now Pansler up for a possible stylish opportunity. Tries to go for the double touch off that side part of the back wall there, not able to find it. Ball ends up kind of trickling into the corner now of M22 Alpha. They really need to get it out of here and get a counterattack set up. Pansler with a whiff on another ball. He had plenty of time on. That's a couple times we've seen Pansler do that. And those whiffs may not look like much, but at this level, that could be the difference between a goal and not a goal. Yes, and Aura uh, now with the dreaded own goal. Oh, oh no, oh. no, no. Oh, I, I, right when I was working on the pole, this happens. Oh, poor, oh, that's gotta leave a mark. They're definitely gonna yeah. wanna come back from that in a hurry. Aura's not going to be happy about that one. Looked like maybe Aura was reading Panzler winning that 50 in the air or beating the shooter. The shooter able to put it right on the back of Aura's car. Would have been an awkward save. Maybe would have been able to do it with a backflip. Instead decides to jump up forward, aerial for it, and try to turn around. Not going to end up being enough. Flips into it, shoots it on his own net. Really tragic. And that is how M22 go up 1-0 here. Imagine, imagine, GJ, that this is the scoreline that holds for uh, Midweast Gaming to get eliminated. Never mind, you don't have to imagine it because it's not happening. Flyzik with a good shot on net here goes off the left side post, pops back out into the center for Panzler. Good, does a good job of adjusting his car's rotation, reading that, and being able to put it straight back on the net. And this game is tied in game three. I very early. I was going to mention that in game two, as you said, there weren't a whole lot of uh, instances of boost being picked up and used, but I think we're seeing a semblance, I think we're seeing examples of the opposite of that. Like people are actually using boost and then someone comes in and scores without, well, okay, there was boost being used right there, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't more like that they weren't using boost, just that they were using too much boost in the other games. They were using so much boost off the ball that they didn't have enough boost on the ball to be able to get these speedy touches. And just an absolute mishap here on defense for Midweast Gaming. Ball goes to the right side. Person on the right wall looks like they go up to, to cheat and try to get it. Panzler rotates back, not in time. Fuzz with the long-range goal off the kickoff. And you can't, you can't let those happen. Not at this, not at this rank. No, sir. You cannot let careless mistakes be the death of you in a competitive scene. And oh, there we wow. go. That was no careless mistake. That was on point. Let's take a look at that again. Good setup. Yeah. Panzler with the twist, the spin, and the, well, the shot. <laughs> I was going to say the sink, <laughs> but that was no sink. Yeah, Flyzik there with a good pass out of the corner. Pops out just enough for Pansler to rotate his car a little under the ball. Get that nice little under flip to get some speed into the net. Pansler makes this game 3-2 here in game three. And regardless of if Pansler is my MVP for uh, this game or for the series, 
Hansler is absolutely the best shooter on the field right now. If I'm passing the ball to the midfield, I want Pansler there. Yeah, sure, he's made a couple whiffs, but when he makes contact, it is beautiful. What a read there. Fuzz just really, really not trusting the defender. Yoshi with a good pass here. Fuzz just absolutely disrespecting Flyzik's ability to read that ball and paying off for him. Flyzik whiffs on that one. Fuzz able to pick up the ball as it falls under him. Flyzik, you can see there, kind of spinning his wheels out of rotation or out of frustration right before the kickoff. Just needs to kind of, you know, bend down the hatches, stick to the fundamentals, fly up, meet the ball at its peak, make sure you're not going to get beat. They've got this. Midweast Gaming can do this, and so can M22. Both teams still kind of playing sloppy Rocket League, in my opinion. Just more goals coming out now. A little bit better offense, a little bit worse defense from both teams, in my opinion. Would you, ha would you agree, GJ, or you got something else? Yeah, the rust from game one is just gone at this point. There is little to no rust at all from either side of the fence. We are seeing some great skill all around from M22 Alpha and Midweast Gaming. At this point, it just takes one, maybe two tiny, tiny mistakes to spell the difference between victory or defeat. Because look at the score. It's tied three apiece. It's tied three apiece. We're past the two-minute mark. This is go time for both teams, especially considering Game three in the round of 16, you don't want to lose on the round of 16. That's just embarrassing. I mean, losing in the finals, you could take it, I suppose. I mean, that's equally, that's <laughs> uniquely painful, but round of 16, ugh, let's, not, let's not go down that route. Yeah, I would actually have to disagree with you, DJ. I think this is probably the worst game, like, Mistake-wise, between these two teams, a lot of mistakes coming out from both teams. Like right there, Savage ah, RL yes, just yes. passes the ball to Pansler. Uh, almost every goal coming off of a silly mistake. And honestly, you know, at the end of the day, that's what happens. The team that makes less mistakes loses. However, the most mistakes we've seen have been in this game, which is why we're seeing such a heavy scoreline here compared to the 2-0 and the 2-1 of game one and two. But now we've got... Savage trying to make up for his past mistake or is going to be there on defense to clear it out. Yeah, and now with a demo here, there's going to be some uh, some space on the field for Midweast to do something. Flies it up off the wall, gets a double, can't get oh. it down into the net. Puts it down into the goalie box instead. No teammate there to be able to capitalize. Double commit here from Midweast could have been dangerous, but they get a really nice hit. And Yoshi with almost a really bad read on that ball touches it into the post. Credited with the save, but really the post saved him there. Almost an own goal. Yes. Man, imagine having an own goal on both sides in the same game. <laughs> yeah. And of course, the players are doing really well whenever I'm talking, but then the mistakes come up whenever uh, Croc is talking. So Croc may or may not be jinxing. And then again, I could be misreading this whole thing <laughs> like a uh, novice. Hey, I, hey. <laughs> um, let's see. Anyways. It's the caster's curse. I understand. I'll be, I'll be a curse. I'll be a jinx for everybody. Hey, that's my that's job here. My I guess. Thing. That's usually my thing. Last time it was my thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Final seconds left on the clock. Yeah, Panzler whips the defensive touch. There could be dangerous. Fuzz pops it up out of the corner. Flies it down onto the ground. The clock is at zero, but the game isn't over yet. Passes it to Savage. Oh! Savage with an absolute boomer of a shot from the top of the goalie box. Ties the game up with zero on the clock. What a pass here from Fuzz. What a shot here from Savage. The defense couldn't handle it. We are going to overtime in game three. This That indeed, Hussein. This much I'll get right. M22 Alpha brought in that goal while yelling out at Midweast. No, we're not done. This ain't done. We're going into overtime. And then, oh, Alpha's like, we're not just going into overtime. We're taking the win. You can sit in the round of 16. We're going to the quarterfinals. M22 Alpha with Aura leading the charge. Wins mid game three. Mid 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 wait, what? Mid Wait, what? Midweast? Midweast won. Midweast oh, won the sorry. overtime. <laughs> That's I, I all got, right. I got it backwards. I got it so backwards. My. Okay. Midweast gaming here. Midweast gaming taking the overtime goal in just about nine seconds uh, into overtime, I believe. Aura taking advantage of the chaos that was ensuing in front of M22 Alpha's net, able to put that home for his second goal of the game 
leading the series now two to one Midwest gaming moves on to the quarterfinals and Panzler, my MVP of course, for that game, three goals on six shots. We are going to be seeing, do we know who we're seeing next yet? Well, as so I, while uh, we're, yeah, as I recover from that bit of embarrassment, <clears throat> my apologies, ladies and gentlemen, as we go over to your Midwest did indeed win. I had it very wrong. My apologies. No worries. <laughs> that was a fun. That was a funny little accident. But I'll take it like a jet. Now, going into the brackets here. Let's see. Ah, yes. We've got... Oh, here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The, sec the, the, well, the second match of the evening will be our quarterfinal match. And as I hoped it would be, it's going to be XV Official versus N7 Phantoms. Oh, that's going to be right. a match to look forward to. Let me tell you something. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy we get to see this. Uh, you've seen these two teams play before, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I've seen these two teams play plenty of times. Very good teams, both of them. XV Official, going to have my vote here to probably win the series. But I think it might be a 2-1. N7 Phantoms, still a very good team. Definitely should not be counted out. But let's take a let's take a closer look at these two teams MMRs here and see oh, yes. what the tail of the tape has for us. Uh, see see what the stats say. Yeah, we got Moon, Mac, and Matronics for the main three here X, on XV Official Fire Phantom Panther and Cole for the main three on N Seven Phantoms. And I do believe yes, we do have a numbers advantage for XV Official. Not a lot. But technically, N7 Phantoms coming in as the underdog here. I would absolutely pick XV Official to win this game 2-1. to one, Or um, not the game, the series 2-1. to one. I think N7 Phantoms is going to win game 2 out of this series. But we'll see uh, We'll see if they can prove me wrong. I would actually be... I would enjoy being proved wrong. N7 Phantoms is a strong team that I would like to see perform a little bit better. It's, it's one of those things where you watch them and they're just like so close to being great. They're like very, very, very good, and they're just like so close to being great. And I've seen the, I've seen their ability, and I know that they can do it. And it's been a couple weeks since I've seen them last, so maybe they have improved. That would be great to see. Either way, GJ, what do you think about these two teams? Who do you got winning the series? It's a bit of a toss-up for me. I know for a fact it's gonna go to Game Three. I was kind of sort of right about Game Three with the, with the, with that round of sixteen match. Uh, my big mouth aside. Now, as for who's gonna win, I'm thinking it's gonna be it's gonna be very close, but I'm thinking it's gonna be XV official. But we'll see. Now we got uh, players coming into the stadium right now as we speak. Yeah, we're gonna have XV official on blue, N7 Phantoms on orange, Cole Fire Phantom, and WLVF. I'm not sure uh, if that Whoa. is Panther or not. For N7 Phantoms, XV Official in blue with Mac Matronics and Moon. Of course, the main three we were talking about. Getting it started early, however, is N7 Phantoms with a shot on net. Moon there to play some good defense. Matronics now on the near post gets a soft touch for Mac to clear out. I expect to see a lot of crisper Rocket League than we saw in this in the last series that we watched. Both of those teams we just watched able to play really good and precise Rocket League. But unfortunately, just we didn't see it on display there. Here we've got two teams that have been proven to be uh, very, very good teams. And I, I just expect more from these good teams that we have in the bracket. Cole here now looking for Fire Phantom on the right. Fire Phantom opting not to go for that ball as he was going to be beat by Mac. Ops for the 50 down in the corner. Pops up center for WLVF. Defended well by XV Official, and now they could be on a counterattack here. Cole gets a demo to foil that counterattack immediately. Fire Phantom, plenty of time and space. Moon with a great save off of the near post. Had to fly backwards at speed for that. Really good save there by Moon. Now WLVF on the corner, 50 with Mac. Cole's going to be first one there, passes it out. And they're going to be on the counterattack here now. Moon, last one back, does get the flick over one. Can't get it by two. Centers it out to nobody. WLVF kind of... Kind of just centered it out to nobody. Unfortunately, his team not there. I uh, couldn't really see the field to see if that was good, a good decision for the third man to be there or not. But still, WLVF is not going to be happy about centering a ball out that easily for his teammates. Quadruple commit here in front of the net. 
of N7 Phantoms ends up going N7 Phantoms way as Cole gets to dribble the ball for free all the way downfield, touches it by one and flicks it by another. Mac not able to get the bump in time, so not actually a flick there, just a touch, uh, just a touch by the last defender. Mac looking for the demo. I thought there may have been a flick over there. Good pass from Phantom to set that ball up. Now Matronics off the right wall, looking to get an early answering goal is going to be XV official Mac. Almost gets it by WLVF, able to get his tires on the ball, smacks it between the wall and his car. Able to slow it down now. And now up for the ball is Mac. Matronics on the right side wall. Could have an opportunity here. Backflips, not sure if that was on purpose. Does center it out. No one from XB official able to put it on net. Uh looks a lot of a lot of wasted passes here right now. We need to see we need to see some more aggression coming out from the two man on both of these teams really good passes coming out from the number one player and good defensive play from the third player is not a lot of uh not a lot of bad clears to go by but the two man just needs to be a little more aggressive moon however over committing here as the third man thinking he had cold beat gets a free pass into the center wlvf with a shot matronics on the brick wall save not gonna let that one go in nice pass to mac there as mac tries to get it on net unable to do so Tries to center it out. Cole there to play defense. And a 50 is going to have that ball falling in the middle of the field. Whose way will it go? Mac now with two beautiful touches there to get the ball going. Back down to the side of the uh, N7 Phantoms who collect the ball and try to look to add an, uh, an equalizing goal here. Cole with a good clear. Mac should be there for an easy save. Not as easy as it looked, but still pretty easy for players of this rank. Mac now off the side wall, passes to himself, gets the touch, not able to get it down onto the net as there was also a defensive touch there, I think, by Fire Fan. Some really good play to not let um, Matronics, I think, as he took that shot, to not let Matronics just have a free open lane to the net. Now Matronics collects a bad first touch there, gives Cole time to come in and challenge and create a little chaos. GJ, this game is already so much faster than the other game are you are you would you agree or you think that they could step it up a little bit i don't know i've now from my experience with watching xv official for example i'm i've seen them play a little bit faster like more intense i think they may be like uh holding themselves back a little bit uh get a feel for how ensign and phantoms plays maybe I know I'm guessing at this point. It has been a good while. It's been a good while since I've seen the Phantoms play. Going on the other side of the fence here. I say a good while, but really, I don't think it's been that long. <laughs> I think two weeks. I think they missed last week, but they were here two weeks ago. Ah uh, yes, yes. And Either way. Oh wait! Oh. Whoa, ho, ho, hold the phone. Give the phone to XV official, particularly Matron X. A great goal here for Major Knicks with a little bit of help from Moon Man. Oh, right past the goalie. Solid, solid shot. And I've been meaning to say this. Wolf is the uh, sub for and for the Wolf is the sub for his team. He's taking the place of Panther, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So we'll go ahead and call him Wolf then, unless someone in chat wants to let us uh, let us know that. That is hey, I've been not how to Wolf. pronounce his I've screen name. I've been calling him Wolf throughout the entirety of my time in Slips. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Cole almost almost taking the game out of the hands of overtime, but we are going to see overtime here. These teams deadlocked at one going into overtime. We've got the kickoff going in favor of XV official Moon now in the corner trying to get it out for his teammates. Matronics will be first there. A little bit of a weak touch Wolf to collect the ball. Moon and Fire Phantom come up together in the midfield to send that ball to the outside. Now Moon ending up bumping Mac pretty heavy there. That was really unfortunate. Fire Phantom could have a free shot here. Pops it off of his wheel. Passes to Wolf. Wolf oh, oh, between oh, the no. two defenders. Oh. A double commit leads to an open net. And Fire Phantom slides it into the net for the game-winning goal here in OT. Game one. Slides to the left. Boom. Slides to the right. Chris Cross. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> N7 Phantoms proving the poll results to be correct takes game one win. But we still got at least one more game left. XP officials, 
they are a strong team, and if I'm not mistaken, they have tasted championship gold. They want to taste it again. They want to add more gold to their trophies, to their trophy games. So again, for both. Oh, sorry, I thought you were done, TJ. No, not it's my yet. Apology. Not yet. Not yet. Hey, we. Hey, I. I keep interrupting you, and I gotta fix that. But anyways, N7 Phantoms. They've been gone for a little while. They want to get that championship gold. They want to get some moolah to their name. So I'm thinking they want to keep this going. They want to keep this momentum going strong to the end. Well, XP official, they do not want this momentum to be phantoms. They want it to be theirs. They want to take it. So I'm, I'm expecting game two to be even more intense. Both teams are going to play more, more quickly. They're going to be playing faster. Calling it right now. Yeah, and I think they, they absolutely do need to play a little quicker. Both teams, second man, just way too slow coming in for some balls. I don't know. It, I've seen them out of position a little bit where they need to uh, almost like correct their positioning and then go for the ball. Maybe that's why they're going so slow. But the second man's got to be a little more aggressive for both of these teams. My MVP, MVP of that game was Cole. Really good passes, really good plays, and of course that uh, nice goal towards the middle of the game there to give... <clears throat> excuse me and seven phantoms their first goal all right yeah. he's gonna but i think matronix i think matronix is probably gonna end up needing to be the one to step up here for xb official he's always kind of been the guy to been the guy that we've looked at and talked talked about whenever xb officials on the camera well, let's see what they can do here max setting up a good play passing down to the corner for moon centers it out second man at least finally they're going for the shot matronix not able to get around the ball in time to put it on net Good attempt there. Cole and Matronix meet together in midfield. Ball goes to Moon in the corner. Fire Phantom could have been first one there. Maybe a little slow on his touch gets beat. Wolf now looking to create some chaos in the goalie box for XV official, but the ball trickles to the other half of the field. I've been told in the chat that the cam had a 999. The cam had 999 ping in overtime. Like, wait, what? That much ping? That much ping in overtime? Oh, dear. Oh, no. Good shot here by Mac. Really, really good. Uh, really good play off of the ground. Getting that power shot right off of the bounce. That's going to be XV official going up 1-0 early in the game. Pop out of the corner. Uh, and Wolf looking to make it an early equalizer. But Moon does get a good save right under the crossbar. Sends it to the left side of the field. Cole meets him there. Gets beat on the 50. Good dunk by Moon here. Ops to not go for the pass, goes for the bump instead, and oh my god, was it beautiful. Matronix puts in the second goal for XB official of this game. What a bump on Wolf there. Absolutely nuts. Comes in, rotates his car under, gets the under flip right on Wolf's car, knocks him clear out of the way. Matronix has probably never had an easier goal of his life. In his life. Yes. Now that is an example of the XV official aggression that I was expecting from them when going into this tourney. And I'm expect and I was also expecting some dominance from them as well. And we're getting a little bit of that right now in game two. But N7 Phantoms, they don't they don't they don't they are they're not slouchers. They will try and tie this up. Yeah, I really think that N7 Phantoms do have a chance here. Uh Cole there coming together with Matronix on the back wall is going to spill out into the corner. Wolf controls in the middle. Can't get it by Mac. Does end up 15. Matronix pops off the back wall. Mac waiting. What an absolute beauty of a shot. Redirect from the back wall. Oh my gosh. XB official pulling out all the stops. Matronix, that may just look like a bang on net to some people, but you know, you know with XB official that that was a purposeful pass to Mac on the back wall. Beautiful redirect onto net. No defender is stopping that one. And XV official go up three to zero. And Whiskey Brisky just showing some love to Wolf with the shot. And that's, that's pretty cool. That, and some Phantoms definitely got a bit of a fan. Anyways, they really do not want XV to be in this position. They cannot let them have any more ground. You give this is a team. One of, this is one of those teams that you let them have an inch. They'll take a mile, and then two miles, and four the eight the ten but i don't think it's a, an issue of them giving up the ground xv official is just taking it right there oh my gosh another beautiful pass from metronics there off of the 50 from mac 
Natronics puts it high and slow towards the crossbar. Mac redirects, doesn't allow Fire Fandom to come out and save that. Beautiful play there as XB official go up 4-0 to zero here in Game 2. Yeah, you make a fair point. It's not that N7 is at, is willingly giving ground. They're trying their best to defend their ground and try and take some for themselves. But XB official just keeps taking ground whenever they want to. When, <laughs> whenever. Like, wherever and whenever they want to. This is very different it. from the previous game. I'll tell you right now, I already noticed a more aggressive second man. I don't know if they're listening to me, uh, but... That the second man was just so much more aggressive on all four of their goals. They had the bump goal where someone was following up the bump very closely, able to put it in net. They had Matronics there, turned early midfield. Second man pops it back up. Looked for the shot himself. Mac ends up getting the second touch to redirect and get the ball into the net through Fire Phantom. But it just goes to show that even if you are a defensive team, when you're second man, you have to be a little aggressive, maybe a little too aggressive there from the third man as Wolf able to slot one into the far post. 50 off of Mac there. Someone really needs to be playing defense here. Looks like that is Moon's defensive position needs to be on the far post. Maybe was late rotating back into the play. Either way, lead cut down by one for XV official as N7 Phantoms. Wolf does get a goal here. Wolf, the only player to be above 100 points for his team right now. Very interesting, as it uh, looks like Cole and Fire Phantom just aren't getting the purposeful touches they need. As I say that, though, Cole coming in with an epic save gets credited as that ball was going right into his top right corner if he didn't touch that. Matronics trying his best to get another goal here set up for Mac. Absolute beauty. Mac coming in quick as the second man doesn't allow that ball to touch the ground. Booms it straight into the net, 63 miles an hour. Easy goal there as Cole was coming back late on his goal rotation. Sends it right into the net. Yes, yes. That goal from Wolf earlier, that was very, very well timed on his part. But going to need way more than that one goal to even get a chance at tying this up. Right now, XP Official, they are in a strong position to take Game 2 and force the Game 3. Yeah, they uh they really could force game three here. I mean they're they're probably going to. Uh and I said that in Sudden Phantoms was gonna win game two because I thought maybe they'd get a little bit of a wake up call from XV official pounding on them in the first game. Mm. Uh that's just what I thought was gonna happen. But it seems my prediction was a little wrong. Uh in Seven Phantoms taking the first game, XV official getting a little upset, playing with passion. I can see the passion in their car in their car language right now with how they're playing. And now just absolutely bringing it to N7 Phantoms. 5-1 here in Game 2. Still with 20 seconds left to play, though. Uh, N7 Phantoms could get a couple morale booster goals. Or, worst case scenario for them, XV Official gets one more to really just demoralize the entire team of N7 Phantoms. This could be it. Mac off the crossbar. Does get the bar down, but bounces out instead of in. Moon looking for a stylish goal here. Goes for the Doomsy Dish off the 50, though. Not going to be able to be enough. Matronic centers it out. Moon could be there. Not going to get there before the ball touches the ground. XP official do take game to 5-1. to one. Yes. What a game. Yeah, what a game indeed. And I speak in general terms here. I wouldn't count out a uh, morale boost to goal. Because they could, they, they could actually uh, help a team go on to win a series through confidence alone. But that's just oh, my yeah. take on it. I mean, we've seen reverse sweeps before in the championship best of five series, so there's no reason that it can't happen for just one game here in the round of 16. XV official in seven Phantoms tied 1-1 one, one now. This uh, is quarterfinals, by the way. This is quarterfinals, okay. Uh, in seven Phantoms and XV official tied 1-1 one, one in the quarterfinals. Winner will move on to the semis. Of course, only one step away from that championship game. Mac, my MVP here for this game. Four goals, four beautiful goals. Arguably still one from Metronics. But I think that was the right play there. Fire Phantom was probably going to end up saving that goal. Uh, only eight shots in total from XB Official with five goals. You got to play a little bit better defense here. Didn't give up as many shots as normal, but you didn't save the ball on the goal line as much as you were in the other games in Seven Phantoms or in the other game. Yes. Got to step it up here. Got to keep the second man aggressive mm -hmm. if you want to. If you want to get goals. And as I promised. Here are the brackets as they currently stand. In fact, I'll do a quick refresh here. There we go. Yeah, the, the, uh, so the winner of this series will play the winner of Bad Players in Midweast. Uh, 
Yes, yes, of course. That's pretty much how it goes. Now, we're going to be going into the stadium here as the players are already going onto the field right now. They do not want to wait. I do not want to wait. Croc does not want to wait. We don't want to wait. Let's go. Bring it in, Croc. All right, XV in blue and seven in orange, as they have been for the rest of the series. Starting out early here, Cole looking for an aggressive play. Fire Phantom pressing it down to Wolf, though. Wolf with a good shot on net. Moon with a great save on that low corner. Now controls, trying to get it by Cole. Does get the 50 touch and a second one out of the corner. Metronics maybe coming in a little early there, maybe bumped. I wasn't sure. Either way, not going to be able to connect with that pass. Mac now looking to make a solo play. Fire Phantom, good stuff. Doesn't allow that ball to move anywhere and sends it back down the field. Probably kind of throws away possession, but it's going to work out possibly. Cole with a good shot off of the save there. Mac now trying to get the ball as far away from his net as possible. Dribbles it all the way down the field in the air. Now Metronics trying to pass to Mac, looking for another beautiful goal. Air roll shot here. Fire Phantom, good save. Cole there ends up popping it back into the center, and Moon is not going to let that one sit there for free. Gets the first goal of game three here, and that is going to be XB official going up one to zero. Just really zero. unfortunate spot by Cole there. Just pops right back into the center. Yeah, bad spot to be in at that moment in time. And now N7 Phantoms, they're in a bad situation that is also very familiar. Yeah, they definitely need to. They need to step it up here. Uh, soft touches in the defensive zone are not going to cut it. Uh, that one was a little bit more of a fluke. Cole does make a good touch uh, in the defensive zone. Kind of gets caught recovering. Fire Phantom ends up hitting the ball into him and just pops out really unfavorably here. Wolf not able to get there in time. I could have sworn he was going to get an easy save there. Damn. Moon credited with the goal there. Cole pops it up. Moon there to read it and just easily puts it in. A little bit of speed on that one. Wolf does get a slight little touch on the ball before it finishes going in. Just needs to flip a tenth of a second earlier probably to save that one. Good goal from Moon there. Good speed on the shot. And I just realized, I just remembered why I like that airstrike goal explosion so much. It demos people. Oh, no. Here we go again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Absolute, absolute great goal explosion. Matronics with a good pass and bump here. Not going to be able to clear that ball on the backboard as Cole. And then uh, Fire Phantom just... Looks like maybe out of position there in the net. No one on the far post to defend the shot. Easy goal there coming in for Moon. And now Moon's got a hat trick with only a minute 30 gone out of this game. Mac now up into the air looking for a shot here. Fire Phantom back with a great save. Pops it up off the crossbar. Not done yet, though. It's XV official. Metronics with a great touch. Wolf with a better save. Two beautiful shots, two beautiful saves. Love to see it. Cole here trying to get the ball out of harm's way. Max going to look to touch it down over Wolf. Can't get it by him. Cole now with the ball looking for control. Pops it over one, not by two. Now a little bit of a triple commit in the corner for XB official. Need to spread out. Moon and Matronic still a little close. They end up spreading out. Moon up with Mac. Pops it over. Moon too close to do anything with that pass. Matronics will be now into the first man position. Mis misread there off the wall by Moon could lead to an attack here for the N7 Phantoms. As they pop it off the wall, let's see what's going on here. Into the center, Metronics, though. Going to be able to clear that away. No second man for N7 Phantoms to be able to come in and take the shot. Wolf now pops it into the corner where Mac is waiting to collect the ball. Pops it out to Cole. Not a touch there. Cole now gets the centering pass. Matronics is going to have an easy save as Wolf is in the net demoing somebody with nobody to take the shot. Why do you have why are you trying to demo somebody when your ball when your ball is in the corner? If your teammate is in the corner with the ball, cannot be trying to demo somebody in the net unless your third man is coming in to take that shot. Or else your teammate is just passing to nobody. Second man's got to be there, got to be putting a shot on net. If you want to demo, great, but you got to have someone going for the shot or else it's a worthless play. Mac now looking for a double touch there. Ends up putting it right on Cole's hood, who controls Matronics with a good defensive play in the midfield to put it back into the corner. And uh, now Mac popping it up. Matronics not able to get the ball on net. Cole on the back wall. Reed, Wolf, whip way too early. A good save by Matronics on Moon's shot. A little bit of a teammate save there. 
Cole now sends it back across the field. Moon looking for an offensive play. Not going to be able to get it by Wolf as Mac just keeps the ball in the same exact spot. Fire Phantom up to defend. Two members of XV official go flying. Moon able to keep pressure. Could he get another touch? Yes. Off the corner. No. Off of Fire Phantom. Good save there to keep the ball out of the middle. Now Cole pops up off the wall. Not able to get to it fast enough. Moon coming in for the shot. Puts it off the back wall. Matronic stuffed by Cole. Now a demo here for XV official. Could leave the field open for another beautiful play. Matronics with a big pass down to Mac. Can't get the redirect. Matronics can't get the shot. Wolf now in a 1v1 situation with Moon. Not going to get it by him. Nice 50 by Moon to put that ball into the corner. Mac now trying to get the ball out. 3 0 for XV official with only 25 seconds left to play. It's looking like XV official is going to take this series 2 to 1. Little too early to call, but now that bar down shot, Moon is going to end up getting the fourth goal of the game that should seal the deal for this series xv official two to one in the series don't mark it on the bracket yet but i'm calling it let's see what happens i mean we've seen some strange and dare i say incredible upsets in the past four goals and five seconds apiece would be absolutely crazy absolutely Absolute. the fat lady sings am i the fat lady now oh, did goodness. i sing oh goodness <laughs> Okay, let me, okay. There you go. So some some nice opera. I think that's where it came from, right? That saying comes from opera music, I'm pretty sure. It's not over until the fat lady sings. There we go. XV official. XV official taken. do end up taking the series two to one. And they move on to the semifinals. And honestly, that's the fine the sem the, this that quarterfinals match started off pretty darn strong all around. And then XV official decided to say, you know what? Let's just open up a can of butt whoop. Yeah, butt whoop. Let's say that. We gotta be professional about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, XV official really played like the way I would have expected them to in games two and three. A little soft, a little slow in game one. Mm -hmm. um, both teams in game one just had basically a non-existent second man. It's like they were playing somebody in the one position and then two people in different three-man positions. N7 Phantoms, unfortunately, kind of cursed by that same play style for the entirety of the series. A lot of wasted passes, a lot of wasted offensive opportunities. You can't have that when you're playing against a team like XB Official. XB Official does take the game 4-0, to zero, all four goals coming from Moon, and then... Uh, 14 shots from XV official, absolutely just slamming the net here. Uh, an absolute monstro, um, just monstrous shots coming in from XV official. A lot of speed, a lot of precision. That's what we wanted to see from the first series that we watched, but we weren't able to get it either way. It looks like XV official will be moving on to take on the bad players mm -hmm. in the semifinals. Yes, yes. Who are we going to be watching first? Yeah, well, yeah, we're going to be watching bad the bad players versus XV official first, since okay. they're the first ones to be uh, set up and ready to go for the semis. We still haven't quite finished up all the quarterfinals yet, as you can tell from the bracket. It was a little bit out of date. XV officials should be in the bracket right about now. It should be updated. In fact, I will double check it right now, and oh yes, sir, it is. Let me show it to you right now, and here it is, folks. Bad players versus XV official. Two, in, two pretty darn strong teams. Bad players. Oh, bad players. They are the strongest team in the tournament, MMR wise. And oh man, like, like, uh, here's the thing. This is not going to be a one-sided affair, so to speak. But at the same time, at the same time, XV official will be tested against these bad players. I'm thinking it'll go to game three. We've been seeing a lot of game threes throughout this tournament, and I am loving it. I'm all for it. I want to see more of that. I'm thinking bad players will take it, but XV official will give them a give them a good fight. What about you, man? What do you think? I'm taking bad players in two here. Oh, I see. Now, yes. let's take a look uh, at that tail of the tape while we have a moment, huh? All right. Yeah, XV yeah, official, go. very good team. Uh, however, bad players just absolutely nuts last time that we got to see them play. 
Ludwin, JJ, and Cloud going to be the main players here. But it looks like we have Jalen. Oh, Jalen Credible is probably JJ. Uh, we'll be call, We'll be referring to him as Jalen. Mm-hmm. And then Moon, Mac, and Matronics, of course, on XB Official. Now, if Moon is striking the way that he was against N7 Phantoms, they could definitely pick up a game. However, um, bad players, just super strong on the ball. Very good midfield play. They don't, they don't allow a lot of shots against. A lot of teams in these brackets that we end up having have a lot of shots against, but a lot of saves. And bad players just, they don't want shots against them, which is very fair in a game where <laughs> you try to beat the other team. So they play that defense further up in the midfield, and they do a really good job of it and not overcommitting and leaving a, leaving free open nets to be scored on. So we'll have to see uh, we'll have to see which play style is stronger here. I think that XB official plays a little bit more of a passive third and a little bit more of a passive defense. Aggressive second man on offensive opportunities, but defensive when it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Could end up being... Um, what XB official need. However, I, I just have this thought in my head that they're going to end up giving up the midfield too much. Bad players are going to have too much free space on the field and be able to set up any offensive opportunity that they want. Yeah, Jalen is playing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, bad players have a logo worthy of their name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's. All I don't know we're what you're talking say. about. That's that, professional. <laughs> that's all we're going to say about that. <laughs> All right, I'll ju- all right, I'll find a side. Jalen will, of course, be playing as as confirmed by the chat. Big thank you, big thank you. <laughs> have these two teams played to played each other before? I don't think they have. I don't think so. I don't think that we, they have. We've seen them play in different matches, but we haven't seen them play together. And a little bit of an update on the current situation on the stadium. We're just waiting on the other team to come in. We have, we have the bad players in. We're just waiting on. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're getting. Uh, we're getting the uh, XV boys. We're getting them in here. All right. So XV is in. We got the bad players. They're all in on this. We're about ready to start. Bring us in, Croc. All right. We've got bad players in blue. XV official in orange. Cloud, Jalen, Ludwin for bad players. Mac, Metronics, and Moon for XV official. Let's see if our predictions are correct. Again, I had um, bad players in two. GJ has got bad players in three. Mac looking for an offensive opportunity here. Ludwin trying to play that midfield defense does get beat. Moon now off the corner, not going to be able to get the ball centered. Mac on the side wall, though, does get a shot off. Jalen with a good save. Mac doing his best to prove me wrong, saying that no, nah, we're going to take at least one of these games here. But they do need to get a goal. Moon almost gets a free net there as Cloud. A little bit of a slow rotation back to control the ball. And a good pass to Mac here. Not gonna be able to go not gonna be able to find its way to the net. And Cloud defending the shot coming in from Matronics. Really good aggression here from XB Official. This is the kind of aggression that I think that they will need to beat bad players. And they're expressing it really, really well. Mac now off the side wall to Matronics pops it way up into the corner. Should be a free clear here. Jalen not able to get it by both defenders and uh, ends up being a little bit of a soft touch. Cloud now tries to control Matronics, 15 that ball up into the air. And Moon now maybe with a chance to control and get a play going. Leaves it for Mac, pops it off the back wall. Could be a touch here. No, no shot coming in. Moon with a very late shot off the back wall. Matronics picks up the pieces. They get the first goal of this series. 3.33 left to play. And XB official go up 1-0. to zero. A good start, and a great start considering who they're playing against. XP official setting up the foundation for what could be a win, but they gotta keep the pressure on. They gotta keep things going strong from start to finish because one false move and bad players do the opposite of being bad. In fact, they they are very, very good. (laughs) Yeah, the bad player's definitely not a team uh, that you want to mess with. Uh, and give any free space for sure. XB official also not one of those teams. Bad players maybe a little egotistical here, a little overconfident. Uh, I think they have a pretty solid numbers advantage over XB official, but I don't know if they were watching that last game. XB official knows how to turn it up when they need to. Ludwin is going to be going in for an offensive play here. Misses though. Moon gets a free clear into the corner. 
Jalen and Mack meet together in midfield. And this is kind of the midfield play I'm talking about. Cloud is up very early for that in the midfield. Doesn't want to give XV official the space to do anything with that ball. Moon's going to look for a pass out here. Cloud, good midfield defense again. Off the back wall, Ludwin gets another touch. Can Cloud turn on it? Not in time. Jalen there, however, gets, a, gets the 50 on the ball. Cloud's going to try and bang this one on net probably. Looks like that was more of a pass. No one really ready on the side of bad players for that pass. Probably would have done better off with a shot there, maybe. Oh, what a bump by Moon! Ludwin coming in on a Sunday drive for his rotation to back post. Moon there playing <laughs> playing Demo Derby. Bumps him <laughs> way out of the way. That's going to be a free goal for XB official. Yeah, that was Sunday drive. That was a great description right there. <laughs> Moon bully indeed. Ooh, Quick boy. answer here from Cloud. Everyone thought Jalen was going to score off of the pass from Ludwin. Uh, or, uh, it wasn't even really a pass from Ludwin. All three players of bad players getting a shot on net there. Uh, Matronics with a beautiful save off of the first one. Then we thought Jalen was going to score. And then Cloud comes in for the final score here. All right. Oh, a little bit of a whiff there in the defensive end. Could be dangerous. Moon now going up the right wall. Going to look for a pass center. No, just leaves the ball for Jalen to clear it down. Now Metronics gets a nice touch here. Ludwin should read that easily, and he does. Control for XB official in the midfield. Moon, not enough boost for a second touch. Jalen puts it away to the corner. Gets it out of harm's way. Cloud, no boost. Not going to be able to go up for this. Rotates back. Not able to find the boost pads. Almost looked like he was purposely dodging them. Going to have zero boost. Not doesn't end up being an issue there. And now Moon and Matronics, a little bit of an odd play, leads to a shot by Jalen and offensive pressure coming in for the bad players. Down by one, a minute 20 left to play. Now Cloud is going to get an awkward touch here and, and does not get it by Mac, but does go into the center. Jalen, first one there, Matronics with a save. Ludwin probably going to be able to touch this one down. Now Cloud with another shot. Flip cancel to get that little extra power. Jalen with a centering pass. Ludwin, what a defensive stop there. That was a beautiful pass to Ludwin. Oh, almost a flick in the top left corner too. Ludwin is looking for it here. Mac pushes to Moon. Moon not able to get it on net off the back wall. Ludwin tried to get the redirect down into the defensive zone. Ends up just kind of uh, barely brushing the ball, I believe. And now an, uh, another chance for XB official to go up by one more and seal the deal. Mac flips in off the back wall. Is there a shooter? Yes, there is. Matronics makes the game three to one. And my prediction is looking phony here as XB official are up three to one with just 36 seconds left to play in this semifinal matchup. Yes, uh, this is very unexpected. I, I know I was looking for a close matchup, but I did not expect XV official to take a come take a lead as strong as this against a team as strong as bad players but this is just game one of a best of three well we know bad players could be uh going through what is essentially a data download match <laughs> in game two they start to unleash heck whoa speaking of which XV. very possible here Ludwin's going to clear that one away. It looks like Matronics. Maybe an extra goal here for XB official. Moon pops it out center. Jalen's not going to want to let that one go in. Ends up touching the ground here. Ball is dead. XB official take game one, three to one. Very good play from all players on XB official. They're going to have to play like that for the next game if they want to beat XB official. Uh, Ludwin, a little bit of a lackluster performance. Three shots on net. One of them, absolute beaut. Uh, not, I can't remember the other two. Unfortunate save there. But still, only 114 points with three shots credited to your name. Uh, he didn't touch the ball as much. Totally understand. But the touches have got to be a little bit more meaningful. Get the ball out into the center. Get the ball cleared out of your zone. Make your touches more meaningful. Uh, a lot of touches from bad players seemed very... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. They just touched the ball to kind of touch the ball. They didn't set up. First touches got to be a little bit better. Uh, a couple times we saw the players on bad players trying to catch the ball, not able to really control it off the first touch. 
But same thing for XP official. A couple of really bad Aaron first touches that led to opportunities from bad players. Bad players going to need to capitalize on those opportunities if they want to come back and reverse sweep this series and make GJ's prediction correct at the 2-1. Yeah, and I'm glad uh, Hussein reminded us in the chat here. Apparently, uh, the bad players actually had Warbean as a sub, but they kind of let him go. And Warbean is one of the strongest players in slips. So that may have been a costly error on their part. Yeah, it could be, but sometimes you got to let uh, players that are technically better than you, better than the other players on the team go. It's a team chemistry thing. Uh, it's, yeah, it's chemistry. You, put the three, you put the three best players in the world, then like maybe chemistry doesn't matter. But you take three really good players and put them against three good players, and the three good players have been playing together for six years – the three really good players have been playing together for a month or two. Most likely, those those people that have slightly less skill are going to win. You just know where everybody's going to be. Yeah. A little bit of a bully play coming in again oh, here oh. as Matronics opens up the scoring early. Uh, Moon just absolutely demolishing Cloud. Oh. Uh, hey, you keep this up, Moon. We're going to have to get a Moon Bully emote in the Discord for you because you're being an absolute wrecking ball right now. Maybe, Go ahead uh, and put the Miley Cyrus topper on your car. <laughs> Maybe and a, a good one there from Cloud. Twitch. Yeah, that'd be cool too. Yeah, we Either do way. need to get those uh, subscriber emotes set up and ready to go, and we w and we're gonna make them cool. You'll love them. But anyway, well, for those of you at home that are watching on a desktop, you probably just saw Max score an absolute beauty of a ground roller. Gets oh. it right under right under the defender here. Uh, Ludwin up for the pre jump. Mac able to keep that ball on the ground. Good pass from Matronix there to get it by the defender. But if you are watching on a web extension, I do believe we have better TTV emotes enabled. And uh, if you would like to know what the emote strings are for the emotes, Hussein, I'm sure, could put them into the chat for you. And so if you have the better TTV extension, you can hit, hit up some of our emotes and have a little bit more fun. This is not the finals. This is the semifinals. Bad players are down in the series. XB official up one to zero in the series, two to zero in game two. Four minutes left to play. Yeah, so you can see the match type on the upper left side of that match overlay, just below the bad player's name. Ludwin opening up the scoring here, out of the Fennec, into the Octane. Maybe that was the secret he needed. Good play here from Cloud to get it by two members of XB Official, both on the near post. Not where you want to have both of your defenders being. Ludwin takes advantage of the misstep and puts that ball easily into the top right side of the net. Yeah, solid redirect touch right there. Sometimes a touch is all it's needed to uh, get the ball in, in the direction you want it to go. And sometimes you just got to let it rock. Right, and that's what I'm saying about purposeful touches, too. If the ball's already going center and it doesn't need another touch, rotate out. Get back into position because you already know your teammate has the next hit, whether you hit it or not. It just gives you free time on the field to get into a better spot to hit the ball. It's all about who can hit the ball better, and that is made a million times easier by being in a better spot on the field. Ludwin here. With, an, uh, with a good touch to get it by one. A little bit awkward, though. Hard to control. Jalen bumped by Matronix, and it looks like this is just the wrecking crew is what XB officials need to rename to <laughs> as they just bump after bump after bump. Boom. Very purposeful bumps as Mac comes in. Absolutely deletes Ludwin. We'll see you later, Ludwin, in the Shadow Realm as he respawns coming in on third. Over commits a little. Has to turn back quick here. Mac not able to handle the ball. Ludwin now up in the air, has control. Can he get it by Moon? Not going to be able to. Runs out of boost. Moon with an easy save. Jalen now into the center, defended by Moon. Great defensive play there by Moon. Unless he was uh, confusing his teammates that were ready to go for the ball. Looked like it was his ball, though. Good play there. In the end, Matronix with a good flip on the bar. Goes down into the net. I thought that was a pass. I thought he was trying to hit it into the, into the back wall for a pass. But an absolute beauty of a shot. Has the perfect spin on it. Hits the crossbar. Jalen not able to get enough of his car on it to make the save. And they go up 3-1. to one. And by they, I do mean XB official here in the orange color today. No bullying necessary there. Unless you count the absolute clinic that Matronics just put on with a bar down shot. That, that shot was bully enough for me. Wow. Yeah, XB Official, definitely a big fan of their bumps and demos in this game. Very, very underrated and underused mechanic at the lower ranks of Rocket League. 
people see it more as a uh, as a bad mannered tactic, but really bumps and demos are part of the game and the team that uses them better usually wins. Ludwin now up trying to defend Moon. Moon with a great pass to Mac, not able to put it on net. Matronics 50s in the center of the field. Bumps back, gonna have to make a defensive touch here. Ends up touching it to Ludwin. Ludwin probably could have challenged that. Second man needs to be a little more aggressive there. Could have dunked on the clear, but maybe, uh, maybe there was a call that there was no third man and he needed to turn back because it did look like they were lacking a third man there. Jalen on the shot here, not gonna be able to get it by Moon. Pops it up high, still dangerous. Ludwin coming in a little early, not able to read the ball. Moon now pass to Mac out of the corner. Pops up. Could be dangerous. No second man. Jalen pass the cloud off the back wall. Is he going to have a teammate down there ready? Goes for the bump maybe here. Does get one on Moon. Moon is way out of the play. Ludwin able to put it down on net and they score. Lead cut to one. It's not Mac. over. It's not over yeah, yet. Yeah, Mac misses there. The bump on Moon and the slight touch around Matronics. What a beautiful offensive play here. <laughs> yes, sir. That was certainly a beautiful play. And yeah, Whiskey's like, come back? And I'm like, I would hope so, because we've been seeing plenty of game threes. We haven't we haven't seen a series end in game two, haven't we? No, this is our uh our third third series so far of the day and we haven't seen a game two ending yet and uh you know bad players have 50 seconds to make sure we keep that streak alive of game threes they need to get one goal to secure overtime two to secure the win assuming that xb official doesn't score another goal ludwin almost making it a possibility there the shot credited to jalen saved by mac as ludwin trying to come in on the redirect Moon now just trying to make some touches to confuse the def the offense of bad players, rather. Now Ludwin fakes the shot. Cloud coming in. Good shot there. Great fake by Ludwin. Ludwin with a good centering pass. Falls out to the center. No second man. Where's your second man? Ludwin having to try and rotate in and shoot that himself. Need to have a second man there. That was the game tying goal. Ten seconds left. Bad players need to go full aggression here. Cloud way back. Coming in. Gonna get beat. Jalen also gonna get beat. Free goal for Moon. And that all that she is wrote. gonna be the nail in the coffin. That's all she wrote, folks. The first game to end, and it's a and amazingly, it was XV who beat bad players two to zip in terms of wins. I was expecting a game three between these two, but no. I'm not sure what was going on with bad players to uh, for the for something like this to happen, but there it is. Yeah, uh, very, very uh, surprised. Very surprised. Um, bad players, very good team. Not able to pull it out here today. I'm sure we'll see them back again in a week or two. Uh, maybe with Warbeam back. Maybe they, they'll they think that uh, Warbeam was, um, you know, the missing link. Either way, it was a fun series to watch. XV Official putting on an absolute clinic of bumps and demos there in game two and in game one actually my mvp gotta be moon not the mvp on the board but the bumps were just immaculate led to so many chances there and uh also bad players starting to come in towards the end of game two with their own bump plays and it was working for them the oh it, it pains me so hard Pains me so hard to see that pass from Ludwin squeak out on the ground into the goalie box and not have a second man commit to that shot. Really, really unfortunate. And we, uh, you know, it sucks to suck, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, XV official move on to the finals. We'll be facing the winner of Salt and Pepper versus Inferno, who we have coming up right now. We've got. Salt and Pepper and Blue, Inferno and Orange. Let's get a tail of the tape on these two teams, TJ. Uh, salt and Pepper and Inferno. And salt and Pepper go. and Inferno, both very good teams. Uh, we've seen them play in the past before. I expect good Rocket League from both of these teams, all Grand Champ level players. And here is our tail of the tape: Gator, Jordan, and Neb. Probably the players we're going to see. Those are the players that we saw last time: Matt, Beanman, and Ben uh, uh, for Salt and Pepper. Uh, I'm not familiar with Bean Man. Bean Man seems like a new name to me. It has been a couple of weeks since I've seen Salt and Pepper play. Could be a whole new roster. Uh, I'm honestly not sure. Either way, 
these two teams are going to be going at it in a best of three to see who plays XB official in the finals. Oh, excuse me. You okay there, man? And, yeah, no, I just... Well, when you start when you start talking a lot, you know, things just kind of happen. Got to take a, a second and a half to re to regain yourself. And Inferno you in the lobby, yeah. <laughs> Inferno in the lobby. Salt and Pepper getting in now. This is going to be a pretty uh, a pretty intense game here. Bad players said that they beat the G two team. Not playing like that, they didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. They're probably not too happy about that loss. But uh, we're get, right now looking at the stadium. It was mentioned earlier that Inferno is in the studio. I'm um, in the stadium. Excuse me, gotta say it right. We're just waiting on the rest of the players to come in so that we can proceed with the action. Yep. Honestly, and... this has been a great night so far, and let's uh, kick. Let's keep things going. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's been a good night of Rocket League so far. Um, I will say that bad players. Very good team. We did not see the, we did not see the bad players team that we saw uh, that we saw last time. It's a uh, very very interesting to see how they played. I expected them to put up a lot more of a fight against XB official. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're, already starting. The... we're already starting as we're talking. My apologies. You take it away. These teams, they are out for action. They are out for excitement. They are out for wins. And dare I say, out for blood with that demo early on. Oh, I love the demos in this game. They remind me of Twisted Metal and Carmageddon. Bring it, man. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, XV Official just ending up being the better team in that series. But now we've got another series to focus on here with Salt and Pepper versus Inferno. Salt and Pepper Blue, Inferno Orange. Some early aggression coming out for Inferno here as Gator forces Sandwich Man to own goal. Um, who is a uh, who is Sandwich Man? Sandwich Man. We got Bean oh. Man and Sandwich Man, and then we got Matt. I Sandwich Man must be a sub coming in. Not a not a name that I saw on the tail of the tape. Either way, in here for Salt and I'll Pepper ends up ungoing here. Uh, Gator credited with the goal there. Good shot on the near post does le lead to Inferno taking an early lead here. Sandwich Man with a good save on Neb's shot, but a soft touch let Jordan put it back. Matt with an epic save there, and you love to see the early aggression coming out from Inferno. One goal in, and they're not done yet. They're hungry. Bean Man, though, taking advantage of the overcommitted third man with the open net goal here. Gator pops one off a of sandwich man. Jordan comes in flying for as the second man. And unfortunately, Neb, the third man, just a little too far up. Going to leave that All net right. open for Bean Man. I double check. Sandwich Man is Ben of Salt and Pepper. Okay, Sandwich Man is Ben. I wonder if he works at a sandwich place. Oh, that Working at a sandwich place would be nice because I oh, feel like yes. you'd get free sandwiches. I used to work at Papa John's and I would get pizza, but man, sandwiches would be nice. Uh, I guess it depends on the place. Firehouse subs all day, every day. Bean Man with a beautiful demo there. Gator coming in to make up for Jordan's lack of life as he's no longer in the net. Good save there. And another demo from Matt onto Neb, just clearing out the players of Inferno and bumps and demos, guys. Bumps and demos. Can we be famous? Yeah, we need to we need to buy our no, followers, no, primes no, and viewers. No, 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 no <laughs> That's no, how no. that's how you become a big streamer no, on just, Twitch, no, everybody. No, no, we're slips. We don't need no viewer <laughs> bot ridiculousness. We got we, the viewers we have are people and they're awesome and we love them. The viewers who come in and watch our shows and stick with us, even though including those who come in every now and then, they're awesome. All of you guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Our viewers, our followers, our subscribers, the whole enchilada. Anyways, let's bring the action back as Inferno Gator coming in with a great goal. Yeah, good, uh, good read by Neb here off of the soft clear by Matt. Able to get that ball centered out. Gator just slams one home. And that is going to be uh, the lead taken back for Inferno here as they go up 2-1 to one against Salt and Pepper. Yes, yes. Matt and Sandwich Man. Oh, go ahead. Yes, yes, and oh, and I see you, Moon Man. We'll show, we'll be, we show the bracket on the screen between matches. So, stay tuned. You'll see the bracket pretty darn soon. Make, make certain of that. And also, Gator from Hussein. That reminds me, you're cro you're a croctopus. We got a Gator in the game. I wonder if the two are related. 
Nope. Gators and squids, traitors to the breed. Oh! Only crocodiles and octopi, or octopuses. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, Sandwich Man, good pop out of the corner here. Bean Man with a good chance, although all three players for Inferno in the goalie box, that's not getting through a bunch of players at this rank. Good clear there. Gator now trying to get a, an opportunity started. Bean Man, good cut in the midfield there. Jordan forced to make a soft touch back into the middle. Bean Man looks for the pass to Sandwich Man. Could have passed it to Matt, who would have had a free shot on net. Unfortunately, not going to happen for Salt and Pepper now. Matt, last back, pops one back into the center. Sandwich Man first there. Going to look for a second touch, maybe out to the center. Leaves it for Bean Man. Now Neb pops one up. Able to give it up to Gator. Not able to make the contact necessary for the shot. And that's going to be Salt and Pepper coming back the other way. Moonman, you you and XV, the rest of XV official will be facing the winners of this series. We have Inferno versus Salt and Pepper. Best of three game here. We're still in game one. Inferno up two to one. Make that three to one. What a nice long pass by Gator. Jordan there on the far post to slot it in. Good pass up to Gator here. Gator reads the kind of bobble by Sandwich Man and just sends one screaming across the net. Too hot for Matt to handle. Jordan there to put it in easy. Yeah, I just came back from grabbing some water. Inferno are really taking it to Salt and Pepper right now. And Salt and Pepper, they are not a weak team by any stretch of the imagination. They have tourney wins to their name. They are, well, in fact, and I can look up uh, how many tourney wins they've got, actually. Well, Croc here does his thing. Yeah, very, uh, very strong team showing it here. Matt with a good technical read off of the corner, pops it out for Sandwich Man, who centers and Bean Man coming in as an aggressive third man play. Probably necessary here. Only a minute left in the game. Down by two. Works out for them. Cut the lead to one. And that is going to be now a possibly oh. another goal here. Nev off the kickoff. Good control. Good flick. That was Bean Man. really quick. Like faster than the eye can blink. Yeah, Matt just not able to read the pinch off of the save. B-Man coming in a little bit late there. Gets gets just done up by Neb. Neb increases the lead again. 4-2 to two for Inferno here. All right, now here's an update on my investigation of tourney win history. Salt and Pepper got two tourney wins, while Inferno got the one. And that was in week four in February for them. So we got two former champions duking it out for glory and money. As Inferno gets another goal in, they really want that second win. They want to tie themselves up against Salt. Yeah, that one's probably going to seal the deal here. A minute left, still plenty of time for Salt and Pepper to get a couple goals to their name and force an overtime. However, not playing that well at the moment. They had a little bit of life, and this is actually beautiful play from Salt and Pepper right here. Really good pressure. They know they're down. They got to keep the third man up and aggressive. And they're playing well right now, but I don't think it's well enough to get three goals now in 30 seconds instead of a minute. Maybe if they were playing uh, with a minute 30, they would have had a chance. But I think that they're probably a little demoralized here with not a lot of time left down by three. Going to still look to get a goal here. Maybe Neb pushing one down for Jordan to Gator. Redirect attempt. Not going to connect. Matt now looking for Sandwich Man or Bean Man on the side of the field. Does find Sandwich Man. Shot on net. Save. Put back oh, by oh. Matt and scored. I'll call that a confidence boost. Morale boost goal. Do not count those goals out. They can bring in the win later on down the road. You just gotta think, you just gotta, like, think long term, you see. Yeah. Seven seconds left to play here. Not going to be enough time to bring the game back. Maybe one extra goal here. Pops at center for Sandwich Man. Finds the 50 is Jordan. Good save there on the pass from Sandwich Man. And Inferno take the series 1-0. to zero. GJ, I'm going to let you run these people through the stats. I'm going to go grab some water. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a closer look at these stats here. As, we, uh, as I uh, show you the brackets here, so that uh, things are looking rather nice. Now, at darn near everybody but one player in this game got a goal. Like, we got Gator getting two, we got Neb and B-Man also getting two, while Matt and Jordan got one goal each. And the only person who didn't get a goal was Sandwich Man. Sandwich Man really wants to bring in some of that delicious jelly to, that play, to those plays, so I'm expecting a goal or two from him going into the next game of this series. 
Now, in the meantime, let's talk a little bit more about th these two teams. Salt and Pepper and Infernal. As you can tell, they are pretty darn strong. And Salt and Pepper are usually accustomed to getting the win. Like, basically taking a commanding win. They're in a position where they're very, very challenged right now. Not exactly the kind of position that I expect usually see them in as we go into game two already these teams are not willing to wait as long as they need to like they just want to get right into the thick of it here here we go with Krog still grading some water this is some speedy speedy action here there we go overlay set I'm ready to go we're all set let's get on with this action I am back to you by the way I, wow I, wow you Wow, you're like a ninja. Alright, I'll, <laughs> let, I'll let you bring in the play-by-play. -play. I was gonna keep things going until you got back. <laughs> well, now you are. <laughs> Alright, let's see if Salt and Pepper here can put a little bit of a stronger showing earlier in the match. Inferno up ahead by, or was allowed to score five goals last match. If you score five goals every match, you're gonna win almost all of them. Gotta do a little bit better defensively. But to be fair to uh, Salt and Pepper, two of those goals were because they were being super aggressive, trying to get the lead back and force an overtime in game one. Again, the winner of this series moving on to take on XV official in the finals. Matt now looking to start an attacking play here. Gator and Neb back to collect the ball. Matt does read the clear off the wall. Gets a shot on net. Easy save for Gator. Neb looking for Jordan. Finds him. No, he doesn't. Just scores immediately. Jordan with a beautiful fake here. I thought that was a redirect. Let's see if the defenders were reading Jordan's shot. Yeah, both defenders reading Jordan's shot. Absolutely fakes or whiffs. We'll never know. But Neb credited with the goal as it goes inside the far right post. That's a funny one to see. Okay, let's take a look at some... Ooh, pardon me. A little burp from the water I was drinking. Anyways, Matt with a... Wow. Great way to tie up the game. All the way from mid-court, mid-field, mid-pitch, however you want to put it. Yeah, one-to-one -one here. Good early equalizer. Not let the not let the goal lead get to you too much. Nem now trying to get it by Sandwich Man. Bean Man with a, an absolute beautiful demo. Clears out the net. Gator able to pick up the pieces of the defensive play here. Now Bean Man and Sandwich Man back to collect the ball. Should be able to beat Jordan here off the small touch. Does. Jordan does get the demo, which is going to in inhibit the offensive opportunity a little bit, but not very much. Matt reading the clear from Neb. Jordan needs to get a touch to the outside, and he does. Bean Man into the center. Sandwich Man looks for the redirect on net. Not going to be able to find the corner of the net. Finds the back wall instead. Matt with no one in net might be able to score here. Gator coming back. I don't know if Gator got a touch on that or if it was the post, but Matt not able to send it home to, to get the lead there. Two to one in this game. Of course, Inferno up one zero in the series, needing one more win to move on to take on XB official. Salt and Pepper going to need two wins here if they hope to make it to the finals. Gator off the 50. Bean Man clears it away. Jordan there, reading it off the wall. Gets it by Matt up in the center. Sandwich Man, good touch. Bean Man, good clear. Neb collects it in the center field and is going to look to keep Salt and Pepper away from his net. Jordan, though, is just going to, you know, casually drive this one in. Is, I don't know. Oh, man, it's so hard to say because that wasn't really a bad commit by Sandwich Man, and it wasn't really a a super slow rotation by Bean Man. It was just the combo of both of them being kind of bad. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna yeah. Hurt. It's hard to it's hard to blame that goal on one person. If I had to assign blame, I'd put it on Sandwich Man. You gotta recognize when your teammate isn't back yet and stop the overcommit as the third. But uh, you know, also just really good touch from Jordan there to get it by him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you all noticed in the chat, but. I've been doing polls during these matches. I encourage you all to take part in them. I've only been seeing like maybe a couple people taking part. And I'm like, oh come on, there's way more people in the in the in the street in the ch in the channel than two or three. Let's bring in some of that. It, uh, let's bring in some of that action. Let's in, let's take part in these polls, guys. All right. I want to see who thinks is going to win. Let's say game three. Who's go who do you think is going to uh, make it to the semi make it to the finals and take on XP? 
My uh, my guess is still Inferno here. Uh, Salt and Pepper, good team, but Inferno, I think, just the better team out of these two. Not by much, mind you, but I do think they're the better team. Jordan now uh, going to have a little bit of a better time clearing this ball out now that Gators demoed Matt, but Bean Man doing a really good job coming in and early challenge there. Matt is going to be able to beat Gator. Sandwich Man off the back wall gets the goal, evens up the game. Got a little bit of a rough touch here from Gator. Uh, lets his car dip down a little too far. Can't keep it high enough. Neb also lets his car dip down there. Feels a little higher. Maybe a save on Sandwich Man shot. Either way, both cars dipped a little too low on their plays. And Salt and Pepper capitalized there and tie the game up 2-2. Two to two. All right. For those of you keeping score, all but one of the matches we have streamed have reached Game 3. I want this to reach Game 3 as well. Please do. I would love it. And also, remember folks, the finals are best of five. So be prepared for that when we get to it. I'll be honest, I want a game two here, uh, mostly because I have to leave earlier than usual, and I want to make sure I'm able to see the full finals. I would hate to have to leave in the middle of finals. Yeah, but that is true. at the same time, if we do go to game three, I will not be upset either, because <laughs> Salt and Pepper is a very good team and can really give Inferno a run for their money. I just think Inferno is still a little bit of a better team. Good demo there. Almost gets the pass off quick enough. Unfortunately, the defense able to rally and clear the ball down into the attacking zone for Salt and Pepper. Bean Man not going to be able to make contact on that touch. Not sure if he ran out of boost or just misread and just didn't boost. Either way, Sandwich Man back on the attack. Jordan is going to clear it out. Matt there to intercept that clear. Gator to Jordan. Anyone in the center? Oh, and the own goal from Bean Man. Oh, oh no, no. no, no. The dreaded own goal with 13 seconds left. Oh, they got to clean that up quick. Like, oh, it was an own goal from Matt, not from Bean Man. There we go, oh, there we go. no. Yeah. Oh, poor Matt. That really, well, Matt did the right thing. He definitely needed to go up for that ball. Saw Bean Man was beat. Bean Man was not getting to that ball and going to be able to do anything with it other than own goal. Matt just. Uh, unfortunately not able to get to it quite on the right spot and then with three seconds left inferno put one more home and that is going to be inferno going on to take uh going on to the finals to take on xv official yeah that own goal was pretty much the end of the game for salt and pepper uh, that's pretty clear to me yeah uh, matt hey, matt you know almost almost gets the touch he needs just about all right so, Infernal moves on to the finals where they'll take on XV Official. Salt and Pepper, they didn't, even, they didn't perform as well as I expected them to. But, let's be honest, we all know they are a strong team. So, I'm, ex oh, I'm yeah. expecting this is gonna them to be come back. One. I'm expecting them to come back for next time. Like, come back stronger than ever. Yeah, I would, uh, hmm, man, it's going to be tough. These two teams are both really good. I think Inferno could take this one in, in four. Or, uh, man, that's tough. Tough indeed. I, th I think both of these teams could sweep each other. So it's hard for me to predict. I think XV officials playing really good Rocket League right now. They're on, they're on a really good upward swing. Man, I think I'm going to have to say XV Official take it in five. Oh, that, going all the way to game five, huh? I believe so. Yeah, you know, fun I think that it would be fun, yeah, too. And also, a uh, fun fact, uh, the approximated uh, scheduled time for the finals was 8 p.m., and it's 7.43 p.m. right now. So even with all those game threes, we were able to go under par, so to speak. That's actually pretty cool. It shows how excited these teams are about playing their matches. They do not want to wait. And that's pretty cool with me. We've been able well, to, to be fair, that's also, uh, that's also on the good work of our, of our organizers behind the scenes as well. Uh, I mean, you guys in chat have seen them around. We've got Hussein, obviously the mastermind behind everything, able to get these things going. Big Al helping us out today with the brackets and score reporting. And, of course, Nas, all, as always, our lobby matchmaker, always getting these teams in very quickly and getting the games just you know underway. We are here, though, for the finals. XB Official is going to be in blue, Inferno in orange. 
And, also, and we're just I waiting do, on these teams also, to get in? Yeah, we're just waiting on these teams to get in. And yes, I, for the record, I moved to the brackets as soon as I could when you left. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> okay, that's all we're going to say about that. Speaking of the brackets, we're looking at the final brackets right now. It's going to be XV versus Inferno. Look at how far we've gone. Round of 16, all the way to the best of five. Oh, man, I'm just so happy. <laughs> oh, this guy, we're gonna end yeah. this off strong. This has been this tourney has gone from strength to strength, and looks like uh, yeah, it looks like we do need to uh, remake the lobby. Okay. Yep. So, somebody may have gotten a little bit too excited for their own good. It finally happened. <laughs> yeah, no well, someone on Inferno a little over anxious, but that's okay. It is the finals. He so got the got a little bit of jitters going. Best to get them out now than during the game. Now then, we're just waiting on the lobby to be made, and br then we bring the teams in, and we're gonna get the, get the ball rolling. In the meantime, folks in the chat, I'm gonna make the poll here in a bit, but in the meantime, I'm gonna ask you guys right now, who do you think is going to win the finals? Who do you think is gonna win this tournament? Is it gonna be XV official, is, or, or is it gonna be Inferno? Well, let's get a tail of the tape. Let's uh, Let's show these people some some numbers here Absolutely. see if we can uh see if we can give them a little bit more to go on oh no the lobbies they keep black screening oh no it's all right it's all right we'll get the, it's all right we got a great match lobby maker uh, hard at work making sure that we bring you the best rocket league action as soon as possible shout outs to nas by the way and a big shout out to pizza rolls for keeping our scenes up to date now let's take a closer look at this tail of the tape here while we wait yeah, uh, of course, Moon, Mac, Matronics for XB Official, Gator, Jordan, and Neb for Inferno. As you can see, uh, these teams both very close in skill. I think XB Official might be playing better Rocket League right now. Inferno a little bit slower than I'm used to seeing them, but they could step it up for the finals here. They did play well against Salt and Pepper, and, uh, you know, I, man, it's so hard to predict this one. That's why I'm taking XB in five. Uh, what what about you, GJ? What do you got? Well, it's gonna be a game five for me, but I'm thinking it's gonna be Inferno in five, and not just because I want to like, you know, contrarian and all that shit. No, not not just because contrarian, but between the two teams, they are really strong. But I'm thinking Inferno is gonna just just clinch it, just clinch it. You know, right now we're in the okay. stadium. It's Champions Field. It's the glorious champions field. We're just waiting on the teams to come in. Yeah. Uh, what What are your keys, do you think, for Inferno if they want to outplay XV Official here? Well, XV Official can be remarkably aggressive. And if Inferno wants to get a shot at winning, they need to keep that aggression locked down. They need to prevent XV from getting any ground whenever they can because when you let XV Official take ground... That's when you start to lose. Painfully. Very true. I wouldn't want to give either of these teams ground, but we've got them all in the field now. Let's see how they can do here. XB official again in blue, Inferno in orange. Gator, first one up to the ball. Gonna miss, though. Moon having to make an early save. Or, uh... Sorry. Jordan needing to make an early save against Metronic shot. Jordan now off the back wall. Two players up for XB official. Could be dangerous. Gator does get the pop by one. Metronics misses on the bump. Gator into the center. No, blocked by Moon. Now an ebb up in the corner looking for a teammate in the center. Not a lot of boost here. Going to have to figure out a way to get back into the play. Now is Gator. One to beat. Mac with a good touch into the corner. Keeps that ball on the wall. Neb, last one back, needs to make a good touch here. Does get a solid touch towards the net of XV Official. Good bump there to give Moon some space, but Gator now taking the ball off of the hood of Moon's car. Moon with another bump. Jordan awkward on the side wall, able to center it out a little bit, but ends up just going straight to an XV player. Mac looks like he has the flip reset. Gator defends well. Gator now looking to get it by Moon, but not going to be quick to that ball. Very slow recovery. Good pass here to Neb. That's going to be an easy redirect goal. Uh, Moon, I believe. No, not Moon. Who Who is almost back here? Jordan, very good read on that pop-off. Mac almost back in time for the save. Does get a touch on the ball. 
Easy redirect goal for Neb there off of a great pass from Jordan in the center field. So great start, this infernal team. Oh, oh, a bit of a collision there. Not even a demo, just a classic mid-air collision. You love to see it. Yeah, these two teams, I expect both to go pretty heavy on the bumping plays. XV official a little more so. It looks like theirs are a little more planned out. Uh, almost like they have a, a set rotation of when, who is going in for what bump. Uh, whereas for Inferno, it looks like it's kind of just more opportunistic, which is fine. That's that's completely fine way to play bumping plays, but they look like they may not just have them written into their plays here. Mac with an absolute beautiful skull here. Oh my gosh. Gator gets a soft touch, ends up passing it right to Matronics. Jordan up quick. Mac with a good touch onto the back wall. Neb not there in time to make the save. What a double touch. And XV official tie the game one to one. Al, remember, folks, those of, well, actually, those of you who don't know about how things work around here, whenever we get to the finals of attorney these days, if the finals goes to game five, I will play some epic boss music of my choosing. We need to go to game five, folks. Please, I want this to end on the highest note possible. Let's go to game five. Let's rock! Wow, why would I say that? Neb there. <laughs> Neb there with a good touch off of Max touch. Mac with a little bit of a weak touch off the side of his car. No one on the back post to get the save there. Matronics rushing to get back. Not going to make it in time. Inferno go up two to one. Yes. Now yes. Mac and Jordan come together in the center for the kickoff. Neb up on the wall should be first one here. Matronics though, speedy off the back wall, going to be there first. Gator now up into the center. Moon should be first one there. Ends up kind of just giving the ball away. Jordan, almost with a shot on net there, puts it off the back wall. Neb challenges Matronics early, keeps pressure for Inferno. Jordan not able to get the ball onto net and let, allows XV official to kind of clear their, clear their goalie box a little bit. All three players come together for Inferno. Need to spread out a little bit here to get the, to get the field covered. Ends up working out okay for them so far as they do have the offensive pressure, and it has been that way for about the past 30 seconds or so. Nice. Jordan going to take time to control here. No boost gets bumped into it by his own teammate. Oh, almost able to read it coming off the back wall. Gator now trying to pass over to Jordan on the right side. Jordan not going to be able to get there. Neb back for third man, able to easily pop that ball up, going for a self-shot. No, Mac is there. Easy save out to the side. And now we may have an opportunity for XV official. Gator foils that immediately, though. Wow, what do you think about the game so far, DJ? It's been exciting. It's certainly not a one-sided affair. We have seen a an event. I don't, I, the, the, with the few one-sided affairs that we've seen, you know, those one-sided matches, they weren't incredibly, like, incredibly one-sided. Like, we did not see any Brazils this time. We've seen some great matches overall. Like... Well, every team here has like done their be has played their best out in out in the field tonight. It's been awesome, and as for this match in particular, it's been very close. X uh, XV official could tie the game up at any time at this point. Like they could do that as as long as they keep pace with Inferno, and find cracks in the armor. Oh, and uh, I see. X Speaking of XV, Hussein with the slip floor. If Inferno wins this. It'll be their second slips win twice this month. And if XV wins, it'll be their first win since January. And, and their second win of all time. Yeah, XV official coming back in after, uh, I believe, a couple weeks of uh, being MIA and then another week or two, just kind of slow performance, running into some really good teams in the brackets. And it'll do that to you. Yes, Inferno, yes. Are a little bit of a newer team, I believe. I don't think that's a reskinned older team. I think they're actually just a little bit newer. Yeah, it's a little bit newer than, than some of these other teams. Well, XV Official has been around for a while. Yeah. Either way, both teams looking for their second championship here today, and it looks like Inferno is going to be one step closer. Ball's not on the ground yet. XV Official has a chance to tie the game up here as the clock sits at zero seconds. Watch that Moon ball. into the corner. Doesn't let Neb... Get that ball onto the ground. Pops it up center. 
Metronics is there, puts it on to the back uh -oh. wall. Moon doesn't keep the ball alive. Puts it on the ground. That's Inferno taking game one here in this championship final series. Of course. What an absolute fun last five seconds of the game, let alone the entire match. Neb, my MVP of the match, uh, was in the right spots when he needed to be there. Obviously get, gets both goals for Inferno here. Mac, very good game for XB official. Three big saves. Three big saves that could have let Inferno have a couple more goals on their side. More shots. More shots from XB official. That's what we need. Bumping plays were there. Uh, they looked really good for the first minute and a half, and then they kind of slowed down. Got to speed back up. Get those bumping plays back in. That's what you like. That's what's working. Get the ball out to the middle. Send your second man in. First man, go in. Clear out the net. Recipe for success here for XB official. Inferno. They just have to keep being speedy and just keep getting these good touches. They're getting, um, man, it's hard because like they're not, they're not even doing anything crazy. Right. But they're just consistent. They're solid. Their fundamentals are there and they've got to keep them there. Yeah. Consistency and chemistry are two very important aspects of any team. And we're seeing plenty of that. We've seen plenty of that tonight throughout this competition. We'll be seeing more of that. As game, as game, as the finals continue on with game two. Yeah, game two is going to be underway here in about a second or two. As all the players make their way onto the field, we've got five minutes on the clock in game two here. Gator and Moon on the kickoff. Moon getting that into the corner. Jordan, however, does take control. A little, little bit of aerial play here. Doesn't find the flip reset. Gator not able to find the shot. Nev needs to make a good touch here. Can't find it, but Mac was not reading the whiff on that touch. Could have had an easy goal. Moon puts one hard onto the net. Gator not able to handle it. Ends up sending it into his own net. XP official go up 1-0, to zero, just 15 seconds into the game. By now, it's XP who's in the lead in this particular game. I believe it started off with, I believe game one began with Infernal getting the lead. Uh, yes, it did. It did. <laughs> oh, goodness. And Shay is like, when XV wins, I want everyone to re-roll the clip of me predicting it during pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Shay. We'll make sure, you know, give credit where credit is due. They have three games still to win as Inferno took the first game of the series. Matronics here looking to set up an, uh, an offensive opportunity. Pass the ball back to Mac. Moon does there. Now Mac cleared. One to beat. Can't do it. Jordan is first to that ball. Moon centers it out to Gator, actually, on the near post, who's able to clear that ball out. Little uh, just... XP officials just kind of banging everything onto the back wall right now. Just waiting for that bounce out. Almost works out for them as Matronics able to almost put one on net. But it's just not clean. Uh, I I don't know. Against a team like Inferno, I think you're going to need to start hitting it to your teammates. Not just banging it into the offensive zone and hoping it bounces to them. All if they right. lose, we roll the clip when you were wrong. I agree. Oh, I agree. Shay, you have you can't have your cake and eat it too. You gotta choose one or the other. <laughs> oh, Shay, just have it off. Shout out to Shay. She's she's a joy. She is a joy to be with. And there, in case there's any confusion, XP official is blue, Inferno is orange. And an attacking play here for Inferno could be good. Off the bottom part of the near post pops up. Neb not able to go for it. Gator, however, also turning back with Neb. No second man there. Good bump here. A little confusion in the midfield as to who is going to take that ball. Now Neb up for the shot on the bottom corner. Moon with a great save there. Gator's going to be looking to get this one centered out. Mac is going to be looking to defend that. And now it's Moon and Jordan's turn to go into the corner and battle it out. These Rocket League games are one in the trenches. Moon gets it barely by Gator, who is coming in for a shot with a lot of speed. That would have been a tough one to stop. Mac just throws it on net. Gator's going to be there in time. Easy save. Neb now off the back wall. Pass for Gator. Not going to be able to put it on net. Not even make contact with the ball. Looks like Gator had low boost. Maybe a little bit of a miscommunication. Gator looking like he was expecting Neb to shoot the ball on net and not pass it off the back wall. Matronics now up in the center for Mac. Mac throws it on net. Can't find the net. Finds the post instead. Matronics turning smartly there. Ball beats Neb or Jordan. Jordan on the near post. 
Medtronic's able to slot that one into the far side of the net, two to zero for XB official in game two. Are you surprised? Are you surprised, DJ? Uh, I'm not too surprised, uh, considering that XP loves to take ground whenever you get, whenever they get the opportunity to do so. They love to bring in that pressure as soon as they see an opening. That's from what I, that's what, I, what I've seen and how I, uh, how I feel about this team from watching them play. And Inferno, when, well, they're, they're kind of around the same boat, when I can tell. Like, they'll take opportunities whenever they see them, too. But right now, they have been very much on the back foot. They haven't been able to capitalize on much. Not been able to capitalize, but I would have to maybe disagree with always being on the back foot. Really good offensive opportunities just foiled by the defense of XB official like that one there. Great pass from Jordan. Gator overcommits a little bit, leaves the net open. Metronics with an easy open net goal here. Looking for the revenge demo at the end just to... Oh, it looks like he got bumped, actually. It doesn't look like an overcommit. Looks like he got bumped out of the third man position, unable to handle that. Jordan looking for the revenge demo on Moon, can't find it as Moon is just too fast. Yes, I didn't say they were, I didn't say Inferno was always on the back foot. No, sir, they are a strong team. It's just that, uh, you can really tell when, it, it's just when those team as strong as Inferno, when you see them being on, being on the receiving end of a beating, it's hard not to notice. Of course, yeah, I'd have to agree. No one expects the 3 0. This is Infernal. They can definitely come back from this. Of course, they got to do it really, really well and quickly, but I think they can come back from this 3 0 deficit. But we'll see. Yeah, a little more than 50 seconds left to play on the clock. Neb now is going to be looking to get the first goal of the game here. Probably was, was kind of their striker in the last series, as we saw. But now Mac looking for Matronics in the center almost gets it by two. That would have been absolutely beautiful. You could see he had the vision the whole way there. Saw Matronics waiting, lurking in the dangerous area of the goalie box, getting trying to get that shot on net. Mac pops one up for Moon, trying to look for a double here to the center. Neb is going to 50 with Matronics and goes to Moon there. Good touch there to leave it for Mac as well. Looking for the shot. Jordan with a break with a beautiful save. And Mac, oh, very good play to knock that off the hood of Jordan's car and get it on the ground. Doesn't let Jordan really do anything with it. And now that is going to be XB official taking game two series tying up at one to one. That ball is still in play. And oh, there we go. So XB ties the series up. Very good show. Very good show there. Now, Croc, I'm going to leave it to you. What do you think Inverno needs to do in order to come or in order to break the tie? Shoot the ball. <laughs> um, okay, okay, I know that sounds like a joke, but at the same time, at the same time, yeah. that's even something as simple as that can be an accurate it can be an accurate answer. Shoot the ball. Yeah, they got to they got to shoot the ball more. Uh, they're getting the ball into these offensive opportunities, but they're not finding the shot on net. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're just taking one too many touches on their dribbles, one too many touches before they make a pass. Whatever it is, they have to get the ball on net more often, and they got to do it with speed. These defenders from XB Official aren't going to let it just anything in. They either need to do that, or they need to play the most solid rotational offensive gameplay that they could possibly play and wait for XB Official to make a mistake on defense. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's usually pretty bad. Like a second and third man double commit going up to clear a ball on the far post or on the crossbar. Once that happens, then Inferno can jump on it. Easy goal on the empty net. But if that's not what they're wanting to do and they want to play off the counterattack, they want to play off the rush, they're going to have to shoot the ball. They're getting these opportunities and just wasting them by not shooting the ball. XV official, great game. Also needs to continue to shoot the ball. Shot the ball a lot more than in the previous game, and they were rewarded for their efforts with a 3-0 win. Okay, it looks like we got ourselves the hat tag. Moon Bully. <laughs> Hashtag Moon Bully. Let's see if we... Uh, I wonder if it's possible we can make that trend on Twitter. <laughs> that would be cool. But anyways, going by what you said here, unless Inferno can uh, get goals like that, <laughs> like, way to stop me mid-sentence here, Neb and Jordan. Like, what the heck? But still, that was very great. But if Inferno doesn't keep do getting goals like this, taking opportunities, as you said, XV, will suddenly, the XV's defenders will suddenly turn into offensive players 
And before you know it, they're gonna be like, <laughs> go, go, boom. Yep. As and both of these goals coming directly off of defensive mistakes. As I said that they probably would. Uh, Moon and Mac come together on a collision there. Both of them out of position to be able to save this ball. The other one, um, a mistouch by, I think it was Moon on the sidewall. Can't remember at this time. Uh, left the ball open as an overcommit from the third man whiffing on the sidewall ball. Mm -hmm. So two defensive mistakes lead to Inferno goals. And Inferno didn't even have to commit that many players. They, they weren't good shots. They weren't good offensive plays. They were just mistakes by XP official. My God, only now that I just now realize how I, how ridiculous I sounded when I said car go, um, go, 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 boom. Now I can't even say it right. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyways, 2-0 in favor of Inferno, taking a commanding lead, looking to uh, make amends for the Game 2 performance. Doing a good job with it, I might add. Yeah, so far so good. Four minutes left to play here. XB Official is going to be looking to uh, take away that lead. Yeah, watch. Slips finds that way to make M Moon Bully trend on Twitter, even for a moment. That would be incredible. That would be amazing. And people would be like, what the heck is a Moon Bully? <laughs> that would be uh. confused. They, so, so many people would be confused. It would be, whoa, that's not confusing at all. That's a great goal. Yeah, Gator doing his own form of bullying here. Nice little pop from Neb out into the center. Gator absolutely demolishes the defender there. No one there to save the ball. Jordan puts it easily into the center of the net. 3-0 for Inferno here in game three. A lot of members coming together here on the kickoff. Not sure where it's going to go yet. Jordan does seem to be the winner here. Gets an extra touch over Moon and maybe a shot on net. No, finds the near post instead. Mac demoing Neb upfield, not allowing that pass to get out into the center and a shot. Now trying to get the ball out of their own half as XB official Matronics doesn't find the ball, finds Neb instead. Now Moon with a really bad touch here. Gator had a good opportunity, not able to find a good touch as well. Nice little wave dash from Moon, has no boost, trying to get to the ball a little bit sooner. Mac pops up for Matronics. This should be a goal every time. Matronics is sitting there for free, and you give him the ball like that, he's going to score. What an absolute beautiful pass and a read off of the chaos there in the corner from Mac. Matronics coming in, turns that car upside down, gets the power he needs on the shot to avoid any savior coming in, and the score is now 3-1 to one in favor of Inferno. Yes, yes. Right now, XP are slowly making a comeback here from the three-minute mark onwards. And I see in the channel chat on the Discord, yes, there is a no bull, there is a no bully moon emote in the Discord. I saw. Oh I my saw gosh! It, and I love it. Back to that's you. nice. That's that's really great. I'm gonna have to check that out after the tournament is over. Mac now popping one up dangerously. Jordan gets a good touch there to avoid any XP official shooters. Moon whiffing on that hit there. Really dangerous. Mac and Moon now both out of the play. Matronics with a good last man save. <laughs> yes, Shay. All right. Yeah, Shay, the whole Moon Bully uh, hashtag. That, that started off as a running joke in the, in the chat, and it kind of snowballed a bit. Just uh, explaining it to her. And also, speaking of snowballing, Inferno snowballing with another goal coming in hot. 4-1 in favor of them. They are poised to take game three. Get themselves yeah, into Moon. a mo good, good winning position for game four. Yeah, Moon there with a really good defensive, or a defensive try. Uh, to stop that pass coming in from Gator. Ends up accidentally flipping it into his own net. Gator credited with the shot. Jordan probably would have got the goal there, though, if Moon hadn't have been there. So you can't really blame him for that defensive mishap or that play at all. Now Mac is going to be looking to get some control of this ball for XB Official. Want to cut that lead back down to two. And the ball goes way by Moon there for the third man. Pops it into the non-dangerous corner area. Now with a good dunk here. Does get the ball sent straight across the net, though. And now they're going to have to recenter it. Gator beat by Matronics. Matronics with a good defensive play. And another one there to get the ball out of harm's way. Moon pops one up. Can't beat Neb. Ball does come down. Jordan's first one there. Gets cleared out to the corner. Mac off the ceiling. Not going to be able to beat Neb. And Neb clears it away. And no, and XB official are getting into this rhythm again of just hitting the ball at the net and at the back wall. Mm -hmm. 
they've got like they're at half field and they're just popping the ball up at the back wall and uh, the net. Got to look for these passes here. Good bump and shoot attempt there from XB official, though. I do like that attempt. Uh, you, you get caught late in an offensive rotation. You're way up the field. Go and bump the goalie. L- allow your teammate to pop it on net. That's the time when popping it on net is a great idea. Moon there, not going to be able to beat Gator. Matronics back to control. Does get some boost here. Not able to get it by Neb. Neb passes it back to Gator off the back wall. Moon defensive play there. Good hero play from Moon to keep the scoreline settled at 4-1. Matronics looking to add a goal to his stats sheet right now as he creeps up for the pass from Moon. Moon, however, doesn't get it by Neb. Neb pops it onto the back wall. Moon with a clear. Yeah, this is just everybody's just popping the ball right now. That was a beautiful shot at them from Matronics. That was not just popping it towards the net. That was an actual bona fide shot. That is what XB official need. If they're going to come back and win in game four against Inferno, Inferno, not a very strong game from them either. Uh, I'll admit it. It wasn't a very strong game from them. It's just a lot of mistakes from XB official. Uh, Inferno, definitely stronger than XB official in this game, but their offense was still a little lackluster. A lot of, a lot of banging it on the back wall, banging it towards the net from way far away. There's a difference between shooting the ball and banging it on net from a million miles away when there's a third man sitting there on far post. And these teams know that. These teams are much better at Rocket League than I am, so they definitely know that. They just have to execute. Once one of these teams decides to execute fully on those plays, we're going to see a clear, better team. Yes, yes. And if you're wondering what the heck is up with the moon bully ta- hashtag in the chat and in the general chat and the Discord and for our staff members in staff hall, well, moon, well, one of the players in the tourney, Moon Man, was demoing people and just, you know, bullying the opposing team. And folks in the chat made variations of the word bully and it just grew from there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, gonna need to see a little bit more of that moon bully here for XV official probably if they want to score some more goals. Yeah, that's gonna be our new word for that's gonna be a slips word for demoing and just you know bullying the team opposing team in general, calling it. It's gonna be a part of the slips vocabulary now. If it's not already a part of it. So we're going all we're going into game four right now here. And here we go. I want a game five. Let's see a game five. XV had better win, because I want that game five and I wanna bring in the music. I would like to see XV win uh, just because of my prediction. I do have XV official winning this series in five games. Still pretty even so far. Could go either way. Matronics trying to make a little bit of a fancy move there. Almost works out. Jordan finds the top left corner, but he can't get it into the net. Bouncing very dangerously for XV official. Gator now on the offensive opportunity. Oh my god, a pass? Wait, hold on. Did Gator just pass to his teammate instead of popping it off the back wall? That's crazy. I can't believe it. And it almost led to a goal. Jordan not quite able to read it, but had plenty of space. Could have been a really big shot. Unfortunately, doesn't work out for Inferno this time. If they keep doing that, you best believe that one of those is going to go in. Neb is just going to take advantage of this empty net here. I'm not really sure where XB official was. We got Matronics going up. Oh, Moon and Mac both double commit there. Matronics probably got to play a little bit more patient there when you know both your teammates just double committed. But you can't really blame Matronics for being left in a rough spot like that either. Of course, of course. Got to be cleaner on defense here, XV official. That's how three of your four goals were scored against you last game. Don't let it happen again if you want to keep your hopes alive of winning a championship here. Jordan with a beautiful pass to Nev. That's going to be on net. Mac making that save look a whole lot harder than it needed to be. Probably could have just got it from the ground. Ends up jumping off the back wall either way. Now Jordan with a pass down to Gator. Gator reading it on the near post. Able to beat the defender here. Matronics uh, committing for that ball on the wall. Moon committing in the corner and just not able to get to the ball in time is Mac. Good vision there from Jordan to not just throw that to the fall of the far post. I'm so excited about this entire matchup and tourney that I'm tapping I'm tapping my I'm tapping my legs right now with my hands and doing I'm just doing what my autistic brain wants to do when it's excited and I'm not, I'm happy. This has been a great series and right now Infernal, they're coming on ahead by X V official. I think they I think if they assure up the careless mistakes they've been making they'll tie this game up 
And whoa, okay, we got a, speaking of which, it, it looked like that ball was gonna go in, but nope, it knocks away. Yeah, and, uh, it's, it's just, I'm, man, it's disappointing. It's disappointing to see XB official play like this, when I know, I know they can play so much better. Oh, yeah, they uh, can. But Inferno playing really good Rocket League. Uh, seen them play better as well, but they're not playing poorly right now. Moon with a good save there is going to avoid the shot coming in from Jordan. And now Moon and Matronics could be able to make something happen here. Matronics looking for a demo in the net uh, as Moon was coming in as the second man. Mac now up to make the play happen. Matronics not able to get that boost, backs up a little bit, grabs it, and should uh, be able to collect this very easily. Awkward bounce out of the corner. Able to read it, those Matronics pops it down on the 50. Now looking for a touch over to Moon. Moon should be next one to this ball. Matronics opting to flip back, not looking for the demo there. Mac now up in the air, and Matronics back to collect easy after that early rotation. Can't flick it by Gator. Good defensive play in the offensive zone by Gator to get that ball down off of Matronics' car. And it could be another opportunity for inferno here jordan has no boost a whiff there but matronics comes in just with absolute powerful speed demos the crap out of him um but there is a whiff there that led to jordan being able to sit with the ball for free in the xv official zone Th those are the kind of whiffs you can't be making at this stage of the game especially when they're on easy hits like that Minute 45 left to play. Inferno up 2-0. If the scoreline holds, they will win the championship 3-1 to here. Mac with a beautiful save off of Gator's shot, but he's able to put it back into the net, and no one's stopping that one. It is 3-0 to for Inferno. And they are one step closer to taking home the championship today. Oh, XV, they got to bring in that aggression now. A minute and 40 left on the clock. Short amount of time in the grand scheme of things, but pretty long in terms of Rocket League, but... No matter how you slice it, whatever they need to do, they need to do it now. Looks like they got started on that, at least for a moment. Oh! They don't have a lot of time here. They're going to have to make something pretty crazy happen. Inferno, not a team that you would expect to let up three goals in a minute and 20 seconds. Nev here just trying to get the ball into the corner for pressure. Jordan almost gets a shot on net, defended well by XV official. Nev now taking the ball the other way, just kind of gives the ball away to Mac. Mac, this is the opportunity. Matronics rotating out soon, and the ball hit in the center early by one of the members of Inferno. XV official has to have that midfield game. I said it a couple series, uh, last series that we watched Inferno. Inferno has this midfield play that is just unrivaled by a lot of the teams here in slips. And if you don't battle for the midfield, you're going to get punished by Inferno, as shown here by the 3-0 scoreline. Matronics, though, looking to get a 50 here and get an offensive opportunity going for his team. Moon and Mac come together in the corner a little bit. Demoed by Gator as Mac loses the ball. Moon needs to panic clear it out now. Off the corner, Gator's going to keep pressure. Can he get the pass? Double commit there. Nev is still there. Ops to turn back as third man, probably the smart play there as his team had double committed in the corner. Puts one to the crossbar. Mac, however, there to clear it to the outside. GJ, I'm sorry you didn't get to play your boss music. Ah, uh, that's all right. It's all right. I, I'm used to not being able to play this song on every tourney, <laughs> which is <laughs> like, it's okay, though, because the fact that I can't play it every time is part of what makes it special. All right, so ladies and gentlemen... Inferno, your Slips Tournament champions for the week number 26, taking the last game 3-0, to zero, taking the zeros... Taking the zeros, taking the series 3-1. <laughs> to one. Uh, Gator with an absolute beautiful goal to give him, I think, the third and final goal of the series there. Mac and Moon playing really well throughout the whole series. Matronics a little bit slow... To me, uh, a little bit of defensive mishaps, but to Matronic's benefit, uh, and uh, he was playing more of the third man, it felt like. Mac and Moon, both heavy on the challenges in the midfield and in the attacking zone. Unfortunately, doesn't work out for them this week. XB official fall to Inferno. Congratulations to Inferno, and great games to both teams. Absolutely. We've had great matches all the way through. Man, it was so awesome. Like, we've had... Man, we had so many Game 3s in the best of three matches. Like, almost all of them went to Game 3. Almost all of them.
Yeah, it was and it yet, was a really good really good uh, tournament overall. And yet the tournament itself did not feel really long, which is amazing to me. Like the the, yeah. the players just played their hearts out and then some. We saw some great action. We saw some. We managed to get to see XV take on N Seven, as we hoped we would. Like we brought in yeah. that interview with those two players, hoping that their teams would play against one another in the tourney and. Thank goodness, thank goodness they got to do that. Now, yeah, that was a really um, good now, series. I'm going to bring up another poll here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bring in another poll. I'm going to be asking you guys in just a moment. Okay. Um, out of, okay, let's take a look at the bracket here so that you all have a better idea of what I'm getting at. Out of the semifinalists... Let's see, actually, let me rephrase. Out of these, uh, one, two, three, okay, can I actually... No, I can't, okay, okay, so I have to deal with four. All right, so, out of the semi-finalists, out of the four teams, which team do you think is, like, the MVP of the tournament? I'll make the, uh, poll in just a moment. Well, my vote is obviously going to go with Inferno. They ended up being our champions here today, played really well against Salt and Pepper and against XV Official. XV Official, really good game against N7 Phantoms and a pretty solid showing against bad players as well. I think that, uh, I, I don't know. They, In my opinion, they didn't play their best Rocket League against bad players, even though they won. But, you know, they. I think they played better against Inferno. Uh, Inferno just able to take out the win here today. As much as I wanted to put all of the round of 16 teams into that poll, you could only fit so many items into one poll in Twitch, which is okay, I can make do. So the poll is up. Who do you guys think was the MVP of the team? It don't have to be the champion. And as much as I would love to wait for the results of this poll, unfortunately, I am going to have to leave, GJ. I'm going to have to leave uh, this yes. beautiful sports community in your hands. Yeah, we're and, gonna uh, it, yeah, we're gonna have to end it off here, ladies and gentlemen. We're pretty much done. We've got our champions. Inferno, congratulations on your second tourney win. We will get you your well-earned winnings soon. And a big thank you to all of the other teams for playing their best out there and giving us a great show. This is GJ, and this is the Coctopus uh, over here saying thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next week. And bye-bye. See you guys next week.